All right, uh, this is the sixth. Wait, this is the sixth yeah, episode, the correct? Sixth, yeah. All right, so this is the uh, the sixth episode of the Daybot Cast. Uh, this week, uh, every week actually, we'll be bringing uh, topics of discussion, uh, all related to K-pop. And uh, this week, I am joined with Nathan, Anyang, Andrew. The Patriots won the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> And uh, I'd like Falcons. to mention because uh, Andrew insisted that they've both uh, <laughs> they both changed their Twitter handles. Mine's still the same because it's really cool. So yeah, whatever uh, I, whatever you say, it's cool. See, so yeah, <laughs> I, I I used to be um, Andrew double underscore P double underscore Lee, but that's oh, way too complicated. So. Double underscore. Yeah, no, because because somebody took the somebody took the single underscore. So I, I, somebody I, yeah. already had it. Yeah, I, I, there was another Andrew. Wait, P someone Lee. had Andrew underscore P underscore Lee. Yeah, Andrew Lee is a pretty generic name. And then Andrew P yeah, Lee is Lee. also taken. Yeah, so now I, I am not. I am not that A Lee because I am not that A Lee. Uh, <laughs> and then I was OCR Melkor, which is like an old Halo Two clan that I used to be part of, and Melkor is my tag for everything. Uh, but I just changed it to DBC Nathan because dbc underscore nathan because dbc nathan was taken and nathan dbc was taken and what does what every, does dbc stand for? i have like, no idea i didn't look it up like did somebody like miss what is dbc well no because we said dragon it was ball c no we, we looked him up <laughs> no dbc is no dbc is daybot cast yeah exactly <laughs> no he means what did other people take it oh yeah. nobody will know but what yeah the person the person that took it was banned so we couldn't see their account but they still get to keep the name for some reason which is real dumb yeah. So, yeah, they should just free it up when they ban people. Like, hey, your your username. Yeah, it's and if you ever get unbanned, figure out anyone. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, um, we'll start off with Nate's topic. Yep. Uh, so my topic, if uh, people don't know, is uh, when I studied abroad and just my K-pop adventures and other adventures, because uh, 2012 fall semester, I studied abroad. Um, I went to Yonsei University, which is one of the three biggest universities in Korea. Um, so it's kind of like, there's this, they're called the Sky Universities, or Seoul, Korea, and then Yonsei. Um, and it was awesome. And I had a ton of K-pop adventures. Um, and Jacob's uh, drinking alcohol at <laughs> No, he's uh, not. <laughs> as K-pop hot pot, but he was. Um, so yeah, it started out... And I almost got lost when I got there, because uh, it's confusing. And I went to a school that had six thousand students, and the town had six thousand residents. And then I go to a city with fifty million. Let me let me ask Andrew one question: Are you what? drinking a can of water? Yes. Can water? <laughs> what the heck is wrong with you? It's sparkling it's water. It's sparkling water. Canned Dasani. Okay, I, I didn't know Dasani <laughs> made cans. It's my thing. It's my thing. <laughs> So wait, 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 how confusing is the, I just wanted to ask, how confusing is like the public transportation there? Cause I'm pretty, it's not confusing at all. Really? Cause it seems, or from the videos I've seen of like, I don't know, like team liquid or just like people going to Korea, they, they talked about like how like the, like how do, like, are there like different like subway lines or something? Yeah. Or? Yeah. So there's, there's like, it's, kind of, I mean like there's a lot of subway lines, but they're, it's pretty easily labeled like to figure out where you need to go. They're probably okay. color coded, so you, right? You might need to change like trains at like one or two times but it's it's pretty simple um but yeah like getting towards the dorm was easy because i there was a like how do i explain it there was like a company that helped us get like figured everything figured out so they like helped with my application to the school and getting my visa and stuff um and they gave us directions from the airport to the dorm but once I got off the bus, those directions weren't the best to actually walk to the dorm. They're like, oh, hey, so it's like, over oh, here, it? <laughs> up the hill. But the hill was behind a bunch of buildings, so you couldn't really tell where any hills were. So I didn't know where I was going, so I wandered around for a bit. But I eventually figured it out. Um, the dorms were cool, but they were, they were nice dorms. Um, but it's an international dorm, which kind of sucked, because we were like segregated. Like we're our our dorms weren't even near the other dorms. Oh, so you couldn't you, you wouldn't run into people. like the actual like Korean no, students like, at Yonsei. Yeah, you you wouldn't run into Korean students like anywhere near that area. 
Because it's like the international dorms and then the like Korean school, like the school to learn the Korean language, the Korean mm. language academy or whatever. Oh, okay. We're off in a little bit like different area, like on one side of campus, and then everything else was over on the other side. Um, did uh, did most people speak English into to each other yeah, instead yeah. of so Korean? Everyone, everyone was English. Everyone was speaking English, which was good and bad, because like we didn't well, really it's... practice our Korean. Yeah, because so the whole Korean. point of like putting you together is so that you practice your Korean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but that, because that's so supposed to be the only English. common language, but everyone just speaks English to each other. Well, English is a common language, even. With the yeah, that's that's students. the problem. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, so everyone just spoke English together, or so like it was easy to get acclimated, um, and it kind of helped with like for I don't really get homesick, but if other people do, it helped. Um, but yeah, so that was there were good and bads about that just. Cause like my roommate was American and like, I, yeah. So you kind of lose some of the cultural immersion, but you keep some familiarity. Mm. Would you say that the, uh, the dorms there were nicer than at your, uh, home college? Oh, uh, they're pretty similar. I mean, we had like pretty decent dorms. I, I don't know. I don't really know. I didn't have any like, experience with dorms. No, I, I don't mean... know. My dorm is literally <laughs> like, it's like cement bricks is what it's made of. That are just okay. painted white for the so walls. <laughs> we had a newer. Do- I went to in a newer dorm in my school here, and okay. and there it was pretty new too. It one it there we had we had private bathrooms which was nice. Oh, um, oh and wow! And then also th- we had a heated floor, but I don't know if that's just common. In, that's I think that's just common in Korea. So, wait, 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 wait! They had like heating coils it. underneath the floor and everything. Yeah, or? yeah. There was like it was a step up into the room and it was wood. And yeah, it was heated. Oh, so in the morning, that's... it was amazing because um, it was freezing there. Yo, I, I got to go to Korea. Damn, I wish... You know, it's, yeah, I know. It's, it's pretty cold like, in my room right now. So That's what I said. I was like, if I ever get a house, I need that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whenever I get a house. It's probably the, really the, the, the only thing is, though, obviously, if 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 it sets on fire, well, where, where do you... How do you get out? How do you get out? <laughs> um. So yeah, that was kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, I met a lot of cool K-pop fans there just because, like, that was my first experience with other people in real life that liked K-pop. Um, and I think we've said in other episodes, like, inter- a lot of the international fans were K-pop fans, but, like, the actual Korean students were, like, <laughs> older than they would think, like, it's, they're older, they're past that, because it's more for, like, high schoolers and mm-hmm. kind of like our, our American pop is, um, kind of considered for younger kids. Um... But yeah, so I spent a ton of money at music stores. <laughs> I probably <laughs> probably had like three or four or five outings to music store, like just and you just store. come back with bags music. full, and then yeah, I spent <laughs> probably like a hundred, hundred fifty dollars each time. <laughs> so I spent a lot of money on CDs because I was like, it's way cheaper. Yeah. I don't have to import, and then I just had an extra suitcase on my way home that was entirely full of CDs <laughs> and posters oh my God. and stuff. <laughs> um, it's going to be me. Yep, pretty much. You'll have to buy a suitcase while you're there, uh, which is what I did. Um, so early on, the first thing I went to uh, was the Inchon K-pop concert, which is like the craziest possible thing I could have gone to and was definitely the craziest concert I went so wait, to while I was there. That was that was your first. K-pop? That was my first exposure to K-pop live. Yes. Oh my god, oh my that's goodness. crazy. So you, so you got like basically you got the pinnacle. Yeah, <laughs> it's your and first. It was all downhill. From there like you're you're then. even more spoiled than I was until I went to a fan signing. Um, but uh, yeah, so Incheon K-pop concert 2012 was the first thing I went to. Um, we went to Incheon obviously, which is like. A city like right next to Seoul. It's, it's kind of like it's where the international airport yeah, is. Yeah, it's where the airport is. Um, it's just west of Seoul. It's they pretty much merge together. Like I don't really know where one ends and one begins. Okay, okay. Because um, it's all city in between, anyways, right? Like yeah, urban. yeah. The, the entire yeah. thing is the like, a city. It's just a giant like mega city. Um, but yeah, so we went there uh, pretty early, if I remember. This is kind of hazy because this is three and a, or four and a half years ago now. Um, but I remember we went there for and wandered around for a while. I met a couple friends that were also wanted to go. I, I can't remember if we had to get tickets beforehand. I think because so they have special like things for foreigners because um, they like showing off foreigners uh, <laughs> yeah. and they're like, hey, international people like our music. Um, 
so we got free tickets. Um, so so wait a second. For, so for how do you know? How think, do they know if you're a foreigner? Like, what if you're an Asian person who's a foreigner? Yeah, like what if I? I, I think you have to show your passport. I'm pretty sure oh, okay. we have to show our passport or IID or because we had okay. school IDs too. Okay. Um, we got school IDs from the school. You're like, um, and it says international student on it. I, I actually still have it. Um, in your wallet? Was it in your wallet? Yeah, I, I just I just never clean out my wallet, so it's still here. <laughs> I still have my normal school ID in here too. Um, yeah, it's a study abroad program. Uh, oh, that's cool. Oh wow! Um, oh, it's even got the chip in it. See? Oh yeah, you, well yeah, you we didn't use get it. that until last year. I never had well, that. What? <laughs> you could use it as a debit card if you set up a set up a account. That's amazing. Yeah, cause, um, uh, cause the like in Europe, apparently they've had like chips since like 2004. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas sure we didn't get it until 2016. I have to make sure this doesn't have any actual information on it that I don't want out. Nope, we're good. Um, <laughs> I don't. I hope. Hopefully, nobody just like back. Well, I would have had you blur it. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. But yeah. Uh-huh. Basically, with the chips, I'm just gonna explain a little part. I guess is I didn't even know they existed until 2015. All right. Where? Because uh, I went to Europe. And they, you have to have a chip chip, on your card to use it. Yep, Mm -hmm. that's how that's what it's like in Korea. Well, yes, you didn't have to, but it was a lot harder. The sliding cards aren't accepted there, like because I went to France and uh, Spain, so I had to get the chip card, specially made and to specially hold like euros. (laughs) Oh man. Yeah, in Korea, there it was like really rare to have a an ATM that you could use with a sliding card that wasn't okay. But they had one in the dorm for us. Um, so I pretty much just always got money at school. Um, yeah, so we went to Incheon. They let us, I think it was 200 people got free tickets. Um, but I think we signed up online. So I don't think we had to like go there super early to wait in line. We still did anyway. Um, and I want to say, I feel like not everyone got the special treatment that we did, but like, I remember them, like, it was kind of confusing where everyone was, like, lining up and stuff. But I think they pulled only a certain number of us into a separate area, to, which was, like, the people standing right in front of the stage. Okay. So that they could put the cameras on us. So you just happened to be in the right place at the right yeah, time. Yeah, pretty much. This is all luck. This isn't, I think this is all <laughs> luck. Because I'm pretty sure not everyone in the, like, 200, I think we had normal, like, tickets in a different area. Okay, but they but pulled. They some of us they like promoted you yeah pretty much and this was all free which is ridiculous yeah um considering the lineup yeah (laughs) i have the list the entire lineup so uh the mcs were min hyorin uh actress with jyp although she just left jyp um was on on east wait wait, when did she leave jyp like this week or last oh my god God (laughs) i didn't see that (laughs) yeah she left jyp um and uh own you and pete um oh, from cool. so they were the mcs uh the lineup consisted of shiny kara infinite boa iu four minute uh woo young from 2 p.m uh kim tae woo from G- from god boyfriend bap girls day dal shabat Star, tasty which is a i think a defunct group they were like yeah cool. they're a duo i think they're twins oh you're right yeah they were they were uh, under uh woo Lim. yeah okay uh, Ajax, who's a DSP boy group that's like been <laughs> that doesn't well, do anything. Well, apparently they did do stuff, but it was in Japan. Uh, Vix and Monsters, which I think is another group that kind of just faded away. But yeah, so that's that was the first K-pop experience that that's I ever like had. Like so many of my favorite artists, exactly. like, right? Yeah, there. that's that's, like, that's probably. I don't know if there's. It, I don't know if there's a concert lineup that it, that says all it's missing is just like SNSD. It's missing like, like SNSD for me, A Pink. And that's probably about it. Like I would have been yeah, happy. The, if, if I had those A-Pink two, and, and you literally I would, just die. I wouldn't have been able to like. I wouldn't have had to see anyone else. <laughs> um, no other K-pop concert, which I never actually to got to see. A Pink, which makes me sad. They were the one group that I didn't get to see that while I was there. Um. So yeah, that concert was insane. Um. We talked about it after the show last week, but I ended up being on Korean television, looking like <laughs> an idiot. Um. Being a four-minute fan. <laughs> um, yeah he was doing the he was doing the good there, old jersey there are a fist couple pump. of clips of me during uh volume up 
Yeah, we're um, gonna... And then you can also <laughs> see me in the background. So I was with I was with a couple friends, but then we met up with a couple, or we were just near a couple other girls in line that we kind of just stuck with. Um, and one of them was pretty tall and blonde and attractive. So I think the camera focused on her. <laughs> yeah, no, the, yeah, no, that's probably why you got picked. You just got. Um, but no, for for a minute, it was definitely on me. Um, but like all the other shots, it was like her and the other friends I was with because they they like to put shots of international fans during concerts that are on TV just to show, like we said, to show that international fans are. So yeah, we're gonna we're, we're gonna link those. You know. Yeah, we'll link it. So yeah, and then. I know at the beginning when Infinite was coming out, the girls in front of me were freaking out, and so you can kind of see me in the background, like not caring that much. <laughs> just like, I mean, I like Infinite, but I'm not gonna freak out because I only care about the girl groups. <laughs> well, you, you would, uh, well, or, that's not what I was saying, but um, they they performed the Chaser, right? They did the Chaser, that yeah. Song so it's freaking epic. I'm trying to think of anyways. so shiny. I can't remember what they did. Probably uh, Sherlock. Probably Sherlock. Kara did Pandora and um, it wasn't it was I think jumping or Lupin. Um, then Boa did only only me. That's right. Only me. That, or only, only you. One. Only one. Whatever. <laughs> only <laughs> only one. Close enough. Close enough. Um, it's like my favorite Boa song. <laughs> um, and actually for the dance part, uh, Taman did that with her. Um. Which a lot of people I mean, enjoyed. He'd probably be he'd probably be the one to do it anyways. He's like the most renowned dancer there, other than yeah. Her. Yep. Uh, four minute yeah. did volume up. Um, I think they did one other song, but I can't remember which. No, Wu Young did. That was when he was doing "Sexy Lady." <laughs> um, what else? I'm trying to think. I know this was like the first time Girls' Day was a four member. Like they actually didn't announce that she had left. <clears throat> But mm-hmm. only four of them were there, and then like a oh. week later they announced. Oh, so, so she had the first left. time they they did. I think they, this uh, might be this was one of the first four. performances as a four member group. Um, like when you were there, did you even know that uh, Gia was gone or whatever? No, she just wasn't there. I didn't know she was out of the group yet, or that she left. Okay, because um, they hadn't announced it. They didn't announce it until later. So that was insane. Um, later on, so I'm not sure the timeline of all these concerts. I know that was first, mm-hmm. um, but at some other point, uh, I went to the Gangnam K-pop Festival 2012, which was a free concert in Gangnam. I think they just like blocked off part of the, one of the streets and like set up stage, and we waited in a line for like a billion years <laughs> because the lineup to this was TVXQ, Super Junior, and Girls Generation. <laughs> so it was basically an SM concert. That was. <laughs> um, that's Those the, are like the three biggest groups of the time. Yeah, that's like the, that's a trifecta. Exactly. <laughs> it was it was an SM concert in Gangnam, basically. Um, well, I guess maybe three years ago from that point, they were the biggest groups around, but still, yeah, they they were still groups. really really big. So, yeah, wait, wait, we waited wait. in line. Wait, that, but that was was that was that duo TVXQ or yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that was yeah yeah. Okay. T- 2010 was when they split. Yeah, yeah. So well, I mean, but they but the, that that they made like one I album though, right? I can't like, remember what the name of the song was, but they're doing the stuff with all the arms where the back catch me because yeah, that's catch the only it. that's yeah. the only TV is that like the only thing they've done. That's the you don't only know humanoids. T- no, that, that's the also only from that album. The only TVXQ song I ever listened to was Catch Me. Okay, so yeah, I remember them doing that. Um, cause they had the glowy, glowy suits, with the glowy arms. Yeah. Um, and then super junior did sorry, sorry. And I don't even remember. I don't know what they would <laughs> probably have Mr. Simple or something. Yeah. I was going to say, I think Mr. Simple around that time. Um, cause I didn't care. Yeah. About cause that. that came out the previous year. <laughs> I like sorry, super sorry, junior. but I was there for girls <laughs> generation. Well, wait, what did um, they, what did they perform? The girls G. generation did G, um, O and, uh, kissing you. Which is great because I, I didn't realize I would get three songs. I don't think I've. Uh, oh, I'm surprised man, I... they didn't want to perform the boys. Yeah, because yeah, those, uh, yeah, those are around the boys. Time, yeah, I don't so. know why. I it's actually I was surprised too. Or who? Um, or who? Yeah, but I, I was I was happy with what I got out of them because <laughs> I expected like one or two songs from each of them, and getting three out of Girls' Generation was amazing. Um, and we were close to the stage there too. Um, we kind of just like. We because fl- the stage came out for both of these concerts. The stage came out, mm-hmm. um, and we were in front of for Incheon K-pop concert. We were literally like right in front of where the stage came out. So some of the artists never actually came out to that part. 
um but a decent amount of them did so we were like right there um and like i said to jacob i'm gonna make him use a picture i took of kara as our <laughs> thumbnail for this thumbnail. um because i took a picture of kara mid hair flip and it's amazing um during pandora right yeah i think it was during pandora um and then so yeah and then for this gangnam k-pop concert like we flooded in like on one side of the stage so we kind of just like quickly made our way to the other side so we were close so we were able to get like pretty close to where the stage came out for that mm-hmm. too because i think um there were different tiers and i think we were in the second tier so we weren't able to get like up front to where the actual stage was because that was blocked off i th- maybe they had to pay for that or something um maybe this was like the free section I'm not so sure. andrew might know this too and obviously you do too uh but uh so if you're in a concert because i've never actually been to one if you're in a certain tier can you just stand anywhere within that yeah yeah, that you just, yeah you just, usually usually like you just kind of get wherever you get pushed or, yeah, or if you're sneaky or enough, if you're... if you're sneaky enough to like make your way, because okay, yeah. so concert 101, most people want to go to the middle because oh, I want to be in like right yep. in the middle. But you know, there's Everyone so much space to off to the sides. Yep. You know, yeah, I've gotten go to, to like pretty much almost every concert that I've been standing room for. I've been able to get to the side because nobody wants to go in the corners or whatever, and it's still you still get a nice view. So yeah, yeah. you're still like right next to the stage. Um, so that's kind of what we did. And like I said, we came in on one side, so we were able to push <coughs> to the other side. Um, so then, so that was insane, because I got to see all of SM's biggest artists, except for Boa, but I got to see Boa before, so, and Shiny. And FX. Uh, <laughs> I didn't get to see FX. I never saw Aww. FX. Um, and this was before EXO, so, or EXO had, like, literally just debuted. I can't yeah, no, EXO, EXO literally was... They didn't like even they have an album yet. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I, I didn't really know them at that time. Wait a um, second. You said you missed Twinkle, right? Yeah, Twinkle like was that like... came out after you came back? Twinkle, no, Twinkle was like May of 2012. So it had... Okay. So it, promotions would have ended like right before I got there, which made me sad. Yeah, okay. Oh. Because <laughs> uh, I bought Twinkle while I was there, for sure. Um. So then I went to also went to uh, MUCon Seoul 2012. It's like a music conference, but that also has com- concerts. And it was actually was the two conference days. Conference interesting. No, we didn't. We didn't do that. We literally. Just okay, I was gonna say because like, um, you can't so understand what's going on. We had to get tickets for this, but I just basically one of my friends was con. She who was like semi fluent, um, was able to like, contact people, and we basically just followed her and got tickets from this guy who was giving them to Sistar fans because hey, Sistar was a gonna... ticket. Wait, no, not this isn't Sistar. This is wait, a different one. For, wait. Did you have to pay for those tickets no. or No, I, I didn't pay for a single concert this whole time. Wow. I, whole time, I don't think I paid a oh single cent for a concert what? while I was there. Um No, I don't know how we got into this one. I don't know. Literally, all the concerts I went to, I just followed my friends who knew could were able to read Korean websites and got us to these concerts. <laughs> um, so I didn't plan any of this. I just got lucky and followed people who knew what they were doing. Oh wait, um, so okay. was were there any? Because you know how um you know how there's always a lot of performances at like random performances by groups at colleges or whatever. Was there anything at Yonsei or? Yes, there was one. Um, I don't. I didn't. I wasn't able to make it. Um. I don't know. Actually, I don't know if it happened while I was there. Because if it did, I feel like I would have gone to it. So okay. yeah. I don't know why. I, I never got to see a concert. Like, because I know where, the, like, I remember seeing the, like, big area stage thing that they have. Wait, they have a whole stage just for concerts? There? Yeah, there's, like, there's like a, it, yeah, it's, like, one of those, uh like, hill things. Like, the stairs oh, are okay. on a hill. Or like, yeah, amphi- yeah, yeah, yeah. Amphitheater. amphitheater. Yeah, I can't think of the word. Um, it's yeah, probably they for like drama a, they have like an or outside whatever. amphitheater that's for like yeah theater stuff and concerts and whatever yeah that's still um, pretty impressive to me just how pretty much if you're if you're a college student in korea you can go to so many k-pop concerts just like oh yeah definitely i mean i guess you oh, kind of seriously i mean like, like every every student i've talked to at korean club i'm pretty sure everyone has like seen like a ton of different every artists group. yeah yeah um well, I mean, so at this i mean what? it's kind of the same thing or I, you, I, I've heard of like really big colleges like maybe like Ohio State or like a like you know like really those really like popular yeah U of M gets a lot of stuff 
Yeah, so. so maybe like, but like, not to the not to the degree that like a K-pop of or like or well, to I the mean, frequency. No, none of these are related to the college. These are just concerts because you're in Seoul and yeah, everything's yeah, yeah. In Seoul. It's just it's just a good venue or whatever. So yeah, um, um, so, yeah. This one but, thing I was gonna add is uh, uh, one of the guys at uh, Korean Club. He just got back from Korea. He was telling me that there's like certain like services that are like you'll just they just find you because you're a international student and they specifically cater to international students where they'll like uh promote like events to you to go to like oh yeah, like, yeah hey yeah. there's yep. a concert here yep. this weekend or and this is how much it costs or like uh you know stuff like that yeah the school and, actually did that for us um, yeah so i think that's pretty cool they actually let you know what's going on as well you don't really have to do any work to figure yeah it out. yeah um, so yeah, this, uh, MUCon thing, uh, it was a two day concert actually. Um, I looked it up. I could only find the Korean artists cause this is like a music conference, like international ones. So there were okay, like, okay, so. there were like unknown or like people I didn't know from other countries, like even like European countries and stuff. Um, but for day one, uh, Block B, uh, Tasty again, AOA Black, rest in peace. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> right. And, uh, Becca Young. <laughs> Uh, oh, Beck Ion, cool. Or Ion, yeah. Um, she had just come third place in K-pop or K-pop star, I think. Yeah, she was like, yeah, just getting started. Um, but yeah, that was cool getting to see AOA Black because no one ever will. Ever <laughs> yeah, because <it's, laughs> FNC that's... wants to make money. Yeah, that's a relic. Um, um so that was cool. Uh, and then day two was BAP, <laughs> uh, MIB, Jewelry, and Vix. Okay. Jewelry, wow. Jewelry, yeah. <laughs> Jewelry was before. One that of was many when iterations. One, yeah, well, when the A1 was part of it. That was, like, near the end, I feel like. So they didn't disband that, like, much later than 2012. Um, so that was cool. Uh, my friends were really big into Block P and uh, BAP. So we, I saw them. They were they tried to go to stuff that they, had, that they were at. Um, Block P is pretty good. I like them. Hmm. Yep. Uh, I want to. I don't know. If Nalili Mambo was out yet. It was uh, very good. No, that was after though. No, it was. It? Oh, what is? It? I can't remember the name of the song. Um, I don't know if which one was out. Uh, but BAP was newer. That was like right near the beginning. So they were doing like power and and uh, stuff like that. Hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. Then, so yeah, then there was that, like I said, though, we got tickets from the Sistar fan because he was giving out Sistar fan tickets. He's just uh, giving them out? I, I don't know. I, I guess, well, because I think that's kind of how, like, the fan clubs work is, like, the, like, heads of the fan clubs get a hold of all the tickets and then give them out to people that are in the fan clubs. <clears throat> and our friend who was fluent was able to be like, hey, we're not actually in the fan club, but we're international, we're like, students sister. that are fans, and, like, was able to get a few tickets for us. That's, That's pretty cool. cool. So this was, what like, do you do, just, like, send him an email or meet him Yeah, somewhere? I don't know what she did. Um, but, yeah, so this was, like, a, an awards show. Um, I have no idea what it was for because it was all in Korean, and I don't <laughs> really remember, uh, but it had different performances. Um, and the two, the only two I remember were Sistar and Susie. Susie was getting an award. <coughs> so she also, she actually sang an Adele song while she was there. Um, Do you remember which one? No, I don't. Uh, I, <laughs> might, I could probably find it online, actually, a mm. recording of it. Or I might have one on my phone. Um, so that was cool. Uh, and then I got insanely lucky once again because... This was like the last or the second to last trip we went to the, like the closest music store. Um, so uh, in the area that <coughs> this, that the college is in, um, yeah. which is like a fairly popular area for like college. It's, it's like a college town part of Seoul. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of like restaurants and clubs and stuff. Um, and so we went to the music store and I bought some stuff, including... I don't need a man because that had just come out. Um, and the guy <laughs> that was working there was like, "Hey, uh, Miss A's doing a fan signing like two buildings over and later Are on you today." <laughs> yeah, this was entirely luck. We had You're no like, idea what? this was happening. 
he's like, hey, they're doing a fan signing over like at this like right near this right near the subway uh, entrance, which is there was like a mall there. Um, he's like, they're doing a fan signing there later today. You should go. And we're like, oh, yeah, we're definitely going to that. <laughs> so, Korea, yeah, we just showed... Korea is such a magical place where you can be pretty... like buying stuff at a store and there's a fan signing or just around the corner. Like, yep, pretty much. That's a so that was like right entirely there. luck. Oh. Like that day, I happened to buy that album, and they were doing a fan signing. Um, I guess that's sort of the uh, advantage to like the whole country being centered around like one city, like yeah. all the main like yeah, everything is there. Um, but I mean, the city's huge, so the fact that it was they were doing it in that district like area <laughs> that day was just how, insane luck. How, how much of the city did you actually get to go see? Or um. I saw a decent amount of it. Um, so uh, Shincheon is where the school is. So I saw a lot of that and um, the surrounding area. Uh, I went to Hongdae a lot because that's another like that's like a big college G, like, like no place. no that's like that's for like college students. That's where like a lot of indie bands play and stuff. Okay. Um, so like there's a lot of stuff that goes on in Hongdae. Uh, went to Gangnam obviously just because it's Gangnam. Wait, which which is the one that's that's usually like. Has a lot of foreigners. So I, I can't actually. I'm like blanking on the I, name. I, for... I think that's Hongdae. Uh, no, Itaewon, because Itaewon Freedom. But oh, maybe maybe I'm it's, thinking. It's Itaewon. Hong, Hongdae is for college students. Itaewon okay. is for is the foreign. That's like where the near where the like U.S. base is and stuff. Okay. So okay. that's where all the foreign stuff is. Because we went there to get American breakfast a couple <clears> times because we really missed breakfast. Oh. Because in Korea they just eat. A bowl Whatever. of rice, right? They just eat yeah. normal food for. They don't have breakfast food, mm. so they'll just eat like beef soup or like kimchi soup for breakfast. And yeah. It's like I want eggs and bacon. <laughs> yeah, so. like I was uh, emailing somebody from Korea, and she said like, she for whatever reason it came up. She told me what she had for breakfast that morning in the email. Yeah, she's like, I ate a sandwich for breakfast. I'm like, what kind of sandwich? And she's like. Oh, you know, a ham sandwich. I was like, what? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, in the uh, uh, in the dorm, we had a caribou coffee, so I was able to get bagels if I wanted, like bagels and coffee in the morning. So I was able to like get normal or get American breakfast. But Honestly, yeah, when, when we wanted like for a full anyways. American breakfast, like eggs and bacon and stuff, we went to Dewa. Um, uh, but yeah, so so the fans are. Um, so yeah, we just showed up like a few hours later at like 4 p.m or whatever and there was a line and they were like okay uh you you have to buy a copy of the cd and you get a ticket <laughs> to the fan signing and Wait, so you, we, we did, did you have to buy two copies of the cd yeah but <laughs> it was worth it yeah um, why not? so yeah we so uh, you have two of that that cd that's on your shelf back there. i think no i think i gave it to someone oh, okay um, i think i gave the the one copy the unsigned copy um so yeah we just we showed up bought bought the copy of the cd got the ticket to the van signing we sat in the theater for like an hour and a half where they literally played i, I don't need a man on loop the entire time oh just that God. song just that song they didn't <laughs> play any other songs. songs they just none of the album songs they literally just played i don't need a man on loop. so like oh by like the so third i hour, literally you know <laughs> every lyric to that song if, if the beginning of that song starts playing i can sing it entirely so yeah, it's just, um, it's just burned into your mind at this point. You, you listen to I Don't Need a Man for an hour and a half we straight. We literally listened to I Don't Need a Man like 50 times in a row is what happened. Oh my god. <laughs> but the reward was getting to meet Miss A, which was amazing. Um, and this was like right after Susie's award thing too, so I remember talking to her about it. I was like, okay. hey, I was at the award. Oh, she's awesome. like, oh, thank you for coming. Um, and then I got flustered with uh min because she speaks fluent english and i forgot that <laughs> even though she asked me a question in english i answered in korean and i was like wait no because <laughs> she's wait, like you speak english she's like where are you from i was like me <laughs> like, me, <laughs> me. <laughs> i was like wait america you know because she literally asked me where am i from in english <laughs> like, i was like detroit she's like me oh, cool. <laughs> um but yeah, You're I, like, oh, I just got Detroit. Uh, well, because then she asked like where, and I was like Michigan, Detroit. Um, she's like, oh, that's cool. Um, but yeah, that was cool. So I got to meet Miss A. There, I got my signatures. Over there, they all say to Nathan with a heart. Oh <laughs> damn! They 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 got the heart in. <laughs> yep, they got the heart in. 
Gotta have that fan service um, at the fan signings. I only have the, one signature. The other, the last story was the day where we wandered around going to pretty much every entertainment company. Uh, because just... so, I don't, I, I don't recommend this. Um, we kind of tried to cheat our way into some entertainment companies. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? Okay. So <laughs> our friend that, uh, our friend that was fluent that I talked about, that got the star tickets or whatever. She was trying to get an internship. Oh, so we yeah. used that as our end because we were able to be like, hey, at least get to like the secretary and like talk. Um, so I'm trying to think of all the places we went. I know we went to Cube. I know we went to JYP. Uh, we went to DSP. And I want to say we that might have been it. We might have went to Wollum. I we remember didn't... there were a couple we tried to find and couldn't find. Um. Did YG not have their building yet? I think really they had their building, building, but I don't know if we went there. I actually have a friend who did intern for YG for a while. Um, That's cool. But uh, yeah, I don't. I don't remember why we didn't go or if we. I th- we just ran out. like these are all over the city, so we literally spent like the entire day going to different parts of the city just to find. <laughs> did they, our day did they let you in the building? So I remember JYP. We weren't able to eat at all. Like they, just, I don't even think they really talked to her. Um, about, they well they, they, they probably get that all the time like hey can i come in they're like no <laughs> well they're literally there's a cafe across the street that fans will literally just sit in all day waiting for artists to come out yeah um, they're they, literally you see everyone's got their like lenses 10, like this long 10 10 to 20 mm-hmm. people that will just sit outside of jyp's building all day um, can't imagine what's like a sm and yg then so then they gave us more. weird looks because we were actually Corners. trying to go into the building <laughs> <laughs> and we're, we're like the white people trying to go into JYP. Um, although she she was Asian, but um, so yeah, so JYP didn't let us in. Cube, I know she talked to. Um, she actually we we think we accidentally ran into the CEO of Cube. She wasn't <laughs> sure. Um, she's like pretty sure that was a C that we talked to because like no one was answering. Like, cause so what what did he say? he took her resume but we that's, like that's really funny he was the one who answered he said like everyone had gone out to lunch so he answered but she was like i think that might have been the ceo <laughs> that's pretty funny um but i know we, i remember we bought stuff at the cube shop uh but we didn't see anyone there okay um <clears throat> the weirdest one though was dsp because so <laughs> we they have like a walled off building so it's like it was like basically a house mm-hmm. DSP is um, a like, house. Well, like it's not like a house in an American sense, but so in like in they Seoul, have like this wall. I know this is DSP. Yeah, yeah. So in Seoul, all the houses are walled off, basically. Like to, their their yards are walled. Oh, off. you mean with they have the a gate, gate in the middle? Yeah, they have a gate, yeah, okay. and then you buzz the gate or whatever. Um. So yeah, DSP has that for their building. So there's a gate and like a wall. There's a <clears> there's a building you can just walk into. So we buzzed them and tried to explain our situation. And I don't think they really understood, but they opened the gate. We just <laughs> walk in, and they right. have this like insane yard, like really like manicured garden and stuff. Um, and we go into the, go into the, uh, or we like get to the door like the and like lobby. a guy. Well, it's not even the lobby. We were just on the porch. Like we never went into the building. Um, oh. But like the guy answered. A guy answered and a. Like, uh, a girl answered, to, or, like, was with him. Um, and, like, we kind of explained what we were there for. Um, and she, like, gave him a resume or whatever. And then he asked what we were, fa- like, who we were fans of. Because, <laughs> like, he was wondering why four people were with her when she was oh, yeah. from her resume. <laughs> we're just, like, following her around. And he's like, so are you guys fans of, like, DSP artists? And they're like, yeah, yeah. They're, he asked all of us, and he's like, Ajax. They, they said Ajax because they were fans of Ajax because they were actually doing stuff then. And we saw him in concert, like, two or three times. Um, they actually recognized some of my friends at a concert <laughs> because oh, wow. she's, like, a tall blonde girl. <laughs> they're like, hey, we know you. Um, but, yeah, and I was like, so I said Kara. And I actually kind of regret saying Kara, well, I, I regret not saying Rainbow, because Rainbow would have been preparing for Tell Me, Tell Me there, and we thought uh. we could hear like, girl group music coming from downstairs, and if I got to meet Rainbow and I missed that chance, I like I still regret it not saying oh, Rainbow, because no. I could have possibly met Rainbow. Because you'll never get it again! Exactly! Um, 
So, but yeah, so I said Kara, and every, yeah, everyone was like Kara and Ajax. Um, so he left and like got us a bunch of merchandise. Um, just like just gave us a bunch of free merchandise, and so I have like a Kara folder over there, and like I, I have some Ajax <laughs> stuff over there even, and like, and he gave us all Kara posters, and then we got signed. Home. No, and then we got home and unrolled what? the car posters, and mine was signed, and no one else's was signed. <laughs> Do you think mine gave is it to you the only mistake? signed poster. Well, because I said I was a Kara fan. Everyone else said Ajax and Kara. Oh. Like, I was the guy. I was the only guy, so clearly I was a Kara fan. Yeah. Um, Yo, what so if yeah, you said I, Kara and Rainbow? Wait, I know, exactly. I could have met Rainbow. Wait, how long How long did it take him to go back and get all that stuff? Or did, was he oh, just it like, took a little while. We were just standing there on the porch. Probably five what if minutes. he went to go get... What if What if he went to go over to them and said, like, Hey, there's a really there's this white guy that's a really huge fan of you guys. Can you sign this poster for him? <laughs> that, it, it's possible, but it, it doesn't say, like... it's. I think it's just the generic... Like, it's actually signed. It's not printed on. I know okay, okay, sure. okay, okay. marker. But it's it's just their generic signature, so I feel like they probably just have a bunch of signed. Oh, okay, okay, but they, they it, it, do, like, just 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 just, just tell yourself that he went over to Kara yeah, personally. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, because then I'd be mad because he didn't bring them out so I could meet them. <laughs> if they signed it there, I want to meet them. If they signed um, it there, I don't think he'd be alive today. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, that was that's that was where all my crazy adventures studying abroad that's, that's so weird out. that they let you in they're like hey who do you like here's some free stuff yeah exactly like, <laughs> yeah they, they, that's, that's pretty nice i mean <laughs> it's hospitality if, if i've ever seen i mean it. Yep. i mean if anyone's in korea that was just... the most surprising like everyone else was very business like like just took her resume and asked her like a couple questions and then left and he was just like hey are you guys fans of dsp stuff <laughs> maybe because they need the fans i don't know but i mean car was pretty popular at that no point. back then they yeah they dsp fine. was still like one of the yeah. main companies really yeah so. i'd say back then the top five would what probably be you know the obviously the big three and then cube and dsp probably yeah, yeah definitely yeah so because four minute was one of the biggest girl groups out there well and beast was also one of the biggest boy yep. groups too yeah. So. well so. yeah or, well yeah and then a, a car is what i meant i said four minute by my car oh so like, <laughs> dsp was huge. well same thing but this car yeah, yeah, yeah. But now they're huge because of card. Oh, weekly card. Well, they will. They will be. They will be huge as a card. Oh, that <laughs> weekly card mention. Um. Oh, they they're they're coming back. Don't worry. I'll I'll mention them later. Don't um, I, really? I don't recall. Uh. So yeah. Any other questions? You guys got about the ridiculousness that is my. I can't wait. Abroad I can't wait. One day. One day we're all gonna go to Korea. Oh, uh, like I, I said, once Jacob goes and study abroad. Yeah, you guys. You guys gotta just come when I'm there. To visit be again sick. because I've been waiting. Like I, I have the vacation planned out in my mind. I'm gonna do a week in Seoul. I'm gonna do a week in Tokyo because I never got to go to Tokyo while I was over there, and that that's gonna be my big vacation in the next year or two. Definitely, okay. I'm down with that. All right, actually, well, I could, probably couldn't do a week, but I bet I could go to Tokyo while I'm there too because well, it's not expensive to the, go. Exactly, across, the, is it? the flights were like, like two hundred dollars. Wow. But I was just a poor college student, so I, and like being in tokyo is really expensive the flight's cheap but like you spend a lot of money in tokyo um just because you see stuff i want to buy this well not even that just like it's just an expensive city like especially compared to seoul which where everything's really cheap the cost of living in seoul is really cheap um or just in korea in general compared to america at least um so yeah that's one thing i know people who did go over to japan for weekends or whatever but i never had the money I guess uh, I guess that'll be a rule of thumb for me. Is I'll just save up over the summer before, because mm-hmm. I have oh, a job. Well, you'll the save up, anyways, but so. then you spend all the money on K-pop merchandise. Oh yeah, <laughs> like I did. <laughs> all right, so uh, I guess on that note, we'll uh, go on to the next topic, which is Andrews, if he'd like to introduce it. Okay, so um, last week Nate did his top fifteen. It was the top. Yeah, fi- list. Uh, top is if he but fifteen recommended songs. Okay, yeah. so yeah. Nate did his recommended songs list, and normally this would go at the end of the topic, but uh, I decided to do a uh, top or my list on the top ten, or it was it ended up being 11. top, it top up being 11. eleven. Yeah. yeah, the top eleven saddest songs, K-pop songs, because um, so how it's working out is that this this breakout is gonna go out on Valentine's Day, and so normally you'd think, oh, you know, let's just do the top ten like love songs in K-pop, but you let's know screw that. I'm nope. I'm a sad human being. I want to listen to emo <laughs> songs all day. So although honestly, some of these aren't like that sad. 
Well, they're they're sad. They're to me. sad like, and yeah, yeah. They're sad. But, I have a lot of history with these of these songs. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, the the top eleven sad sad AF K-pop songs. So it's um not one any... of them is actually my favorite one of my favorite songs ever. So, yeah, I'll just be going alphabetical order. So my first song would be um it hurts by Twenty One. So uh yeah, again I I found the song roughly around the time that I had that Twenty One concert. So I was trying to yep. uh, listen up on uh, my or their back catalog. So yeah, it's yeah. I love this song. Or it's just the it's probably one of my favorite like Twenty One songs. So, um, I always saw that the uh, the MV always sort of gave me like a weird vibe. Oh no! For I, whatever yeah, reason, the MV is pretty it's, weird. <laughs> the music video is literally a Tim Burton movie. Yeah, no, yeah, it, like, is, it, it is. is. Yeah, the the style is entirely Tim Burton. Comparison. Yeah, so and I think I th- I think I pretty I like the song a lot because it, it gets to get, with with ballads you usually get to um, showcase their vocal talent a lot more and so the lines are pretty even. But yeah, it, Dara had the weird like like the ha- crazy hair, hair like yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was pretty weird. Or I think time. I think CL had nails, like really long nails or something. Or yeah, it was pretty weird. But yeah, it's... Where, I think they're all supposed to be like witches or something. Or maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was like Nightmare Before Christmas, Tim yeah. Burton style. Like they're just weird yeah. Halloweenish type things. Um, like I was saying, this I don't know. This song's a ballad, but it's more upbeat than I was expecting from the songs on this list. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like I was expecting like straight up. Ballady songs. Wait, it's, like, it's, it's an R and B ballad. So. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, a, it's more. I think uh, that's than you'll, I you'll, you'll see a lot. That you'll see that as a recurring theme. I like a lot of uh, a lot of my e- my go to emo songs are R and B songs. Like, yeah, for, just yeah, personally. The, ne- the next song is similar. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah so well, um, I actually want to add something. Is I I hadn't seen the MV in a really long time, so I, I was yeah, watching I'd it. Never seen it. I'd seen the MV and heard the song and everything from like years ago, but uh. Yeah, like when I revisited it, I noticed that the actor, like the male lead in the in the music video, is like an actor that I actually know. <laughs> oh, really? Who is it? I, I don't know who it is. I don't I don't remember his name, but he was in uh, this drama that I recently watched called Neighborhood Hero, and he was like uh, Yuri was in it, so it was like her love interest in that. Oh, okay. And so, yeah, he was one of the main characters in that. Okay. So yeah, the next song is Blue by Big Bang. So yeah, it's another yep. just like sort of like. R and B, yeah, really yeah, iconic uh, song. So, um, uh, when that whole uh, when that whole album came out, um, it they alive, yeah they they filmed they filmed the two MVs for this and um, Bad Boy in New York. Yeah, in New York, and that was the, that was roughly the time um, I was or I was still at FIT then. So me and Kim and my other friends were like, you know, we're gonna go to Brooklyn and go look for Big Bang because they were <laughs> they ended up fil- or uh, I saw on like Tumblr people were actually going to look for them and everything and because they should have yeah, done it. <laughs> yeah, I just never had the time or I I never went or I was I never had or, or the inclination to go. But yeah, it's I always associate the song with the winter or like whenever the winter comes around. I I, I think I tend to think of this song. Um, yeah, yeah, so it, it's a it, it's blue a, cold, you know. Yeah, it, it's a it, it's a pretty go to like or again like when I first discovered K-pop, this is like one of my go to like sad songs. <laughs> so yeah, that's probably my second favorite Big Bang song after Hard to Hard. So mm-hmm. the most yeah. like winter song for me, this is not on the list by the way, is uh, Epic High's uh, "It's Cold" featuring Lee High. Okay, I need to like that up. song, like as. Uh, like even the sound of it is just cold sounding. Well, I mean, it's, I, like, it's not like you'd put, make a song called "It's Cold" and release it's cold, in the summer. It's a warm. It's I, a summer I, song. I, yeah. I know, but like, it's just I, I guess you get that feeling. Like, nah, I get you. It sort of gives you shivers, and you sort of like your your uh, like the hair stands up on the back of your neck from Lehigh's like high pitched vocals and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Anyways, move on uh, to your actual picks. Oh, but I did uh, like the MV. Yeah, no, the, it's, the MV is really cool. Like, like the it's washed just, out style. And then yeah, no, I really, color, oh, but, yeah. yeah, it's a really well filmed MV, and the and yeah. the girl is pretty cute. It's like I like bit. the Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> Car stat. Uh, so <laughs> the next the next song is "Sing for You" by EXO. So, um, yeah, it, this it, was last year, right? I think. It's like end of twenty fifteen ish. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it was. I forget how. I don't know if it was just like a oh, cuz EXO does these like winter singles or like winter albums or that sort of stuff. So I looked I looked it up this came out with Lightsaber. So it was around Star Wars. Yeah, so roughly that time cuz it was they're the, on yeah. the same it's the same album. Yeah, so yeah, then it's in December then. Yeah, yeah. so 
Yeah, it's a, it's it's a pretty good song. I forget if I mentioned this before, but when I went to see EXO uh, uh, last year, um, they, they played this before their encore. So yeah, they played it alongside of a uh, like a tribute video, like yeah, saying like thank you to the fans, you know, for staying with us. You know, even though we've lost members or whatever, you know, we're we're glad that you still support us and everything. And did they do the whole thing? So on like we are one. Or yeah, I think or yeah, po- I, possibly. I, I I vaguely remember the video, but. Well, I vaguely remember it because I was kind of tearing up. Cause yeah, I know I've been, I've uh, again, I, I've been with EXO since before they debuted. So yeah, yeah, it was, it's a pretty good song. And yeah, um, that's uh, that's kind of what I expected from this list. This is more of the song I expected a lot more of on this list. Yeah, so it's a lot the, slower. the lyrics, the lyrics are pretty are are pretty interesting. It's just the, you know, just about like they really talked about the space whale. Because the space whale was weird. no, no. It's just I the, was yeah. like, what the yeah. hell is going on? I don't know what the space whale is. Space it makes whale. no sense. But or or why they're punching each other? Yeah, yeah. Well, like yeah, they were fight. Two of them were fighting, and then another person was interpreted dancing the fight. That, which was Kai, I, I believe. Oh, Kai. Kai okay. Yeah, he's, you know, he's the dancer. I think, I think the government needs to put money into this space whales. <laughs> space we need to develop space, space whales. whales. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, the lyrics are pretty like pretty emo it's just like he's it's talking about like oh i should have told you i loved you but i missed my chance or you know uh like he walked away and all that sort of stuff but yeah no it's Mm. it's probably one of my favorite exo songs and i have a lot of favorite exo songs so yeah um the next song on the list is that xx by g dragon so um from what i've looked up the censored title censored music video censored everything yeah so uh i forget what the actual word he says is um uh kaseki which means like yeah, so like it, that bastard. Yeah, so it translates yeah. to that bastard or that bitch or whatever, you know. I like say, I figure he's talking about a woman. I would have said that. Bitch. Oh no, actually, no, he's um. Or no, because he's, he's talking, talking about, about himself. No, no, yeah, he, he's talking about no, the, so the, the cheating. The story, yeah, so the story of the song is. Yeah, that's um, right. So he's bastard. talking or he's he's addressing this song to a girl that he obviously has feelings for and he's saying like oh this guy or the guy that she's with is with another girl he's not wearing the ring that he gave yeah, her yeah. and all that sort of stuff so yeah. he's calling him that yep, bastard right. or whatever so that bastard, and so yeah. yeah it's a it's it's a pretty it's a pretty it's probably one of my favorite like gd songs uh, again yeah, like really if you haven't if, if, if you haven't noticed a lot of my favorite songs by artists are the really emo and sad ones so yeah. um uh so if you notice in the MV, uh, Jenny from Blackpink was there <laughs> way before yep. she debuted. But How it, old was she back then? She That's was like sixteen. I, yeah, <laughs> she was sixteen, and G Dragon was like in his mid twenties. So that's not creepy at all. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I nobody that. knew that back then, because <laughs> nobody knew who she was. Yeah, the but beeps, um, the beeps in the music video are really obnoxious. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's they, a pretty annoying thing. I mean, the music video they do like the they should have just they do made the television a center, explicit center. and clean yeah. version. Well, I mean, I don't well, know like, what you would replace it with, or just well, I don't, like I said, just that just guy cut out Kanonja. audio, like make it <laughs> yeah. like silent instead of adding the beeps. They just I feel like silence would have been way better. Yeah, but I think uh, again, going back to like the lyrics, it shows. I think it shows uh, how go- how good of a songwriter G Dragon is because it's it, it, they're pretty clever lyrics. Um, well, just a quick yeah. shout out uh, regarding that XX. Uh, um, actually, originally found it because um, it uh, one of these uh, SoundCloud DJs that I listened to, Neat. He did a really good cover, English um, translation cover of it for one of his uh, one of his uh, albums. So uh, he just know, called it just XX. Yeah, he just called it. XX. Yeah, so he did. He did. He did an English version of it. Of it, it was just really good. So it made me understand it obviously better. So yeah, you know, just quick shout outs to Neat. You know, I, I I love your music, man. You know, you're my I'm one of your biggest fans. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. I had, to, I had to, I had to shamelessly show him out there because he, he's, he's pretty chill. And that um, was your, that is your eleventh song. That's the twelfth one. Oh, that is that so the it's eleven. It's eleven. It's eleven. Oh, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I just I included, saw that that was in the playlist. Yeah, I included a link to um, Neat's original or like English cover of it, but I'll also give a link to his SoundCloud so you give him a. You, you help him out yeah. there because yeah that, that's not his video right yeah unfortunately <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah the next song on the list is star 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 r and b version by uh love that song by so snsd good. yeah the r&b uh, version was on run devil run right yeah i, I, yeah, I make okay. the i had to make that distinction because i prefer the r&b version to the yeah i think i do one. too yeah because they're I, very like they're not that different but and I like them both. Yeah, it, it, just I think the original is more like the original's more piano emotional, heavy. Emotional, I guess. Yeah. yeah, like that. And then so. the R and B version has more it's acoustic guitar and then the like strings. Groove. Yeah, so it's just another <laughs> it's just another song that like reminds you of just like late nights or whatever, just like 
uh, listening to that song. And it's also how I learned what one, two, three in Korean is, because in the beginning, they're like, kana, kana do, do. set. What's the other one, two, three, though? There's huh? two counting Sam. systems. What? There's two counting systems in Korean. Yeah, they have two counting <laughs> Oh, God, so it's like Japanese? <laughs> hana do is, yeah. is like to count stuff, but then like yeah, ili sam is for like money or like large numbers. So there, there's okay. two I counting can... systems. <laughs> I only know the second one, and then the, and then the first, and then Il- the one that they used to count. I only know up to four. So there's <laughs> Il- there's Ili Samsa Oyu Chilpal, ship or Gu ship. Yeah, uh, so I know all of those. And, and then there's Hanadu Set Net Dasa Yosa Ilgop Yoro I hope y'all. God, I need to learn. I need to learn. It's to ten in the counting. But no, just another note of this song. Probably my favorite SNSD ballad. Like, where was my favorite SNSD ballad? Up until Sailing came out, so and so I don't know, I don't know. It's between those two now, but yeah, I, I love this song a lot. Um, we'll find out my favorite SNSD ballad next week. Okay, uh, you know the next kind of the next stuff. the next song is uh this is the one I actually added in because I forgot I, I had this song. Um, or this oh, is so a, this is the eleventh. Yeah, this is the eleventh song. So it's uh, I, it translates to I can't be without you. It's the, the the title of it or by Jay Park. The title of it's in just Korean, but uh, yeah, that's or the acoustic version of this song. So, uh, yeah, no, this is one of the or when I the, this is the song that I really loved when I first got into Jay Park. Um, just, when I uh, when I listened to it, the one thing that stuck out to me is like how uh, I get it might be because of this version. I don't know what the original version sounds like, yeah, but how like. Say. Like Good simplistic point. and uh, like stripped back, it is. It's like just yeah. a guitar and his voice. I yeah, like no, that. that's I think that's, that's not what I was gonna say. It's, it's oh. <laughs> what were you gonna say? No, go ahead. I don't know. I, I was just gonna say, like, honestly, wasn't a huge fan of the song. It's um, just or because like, good. I f- feel like he goes way too hard for the rapping parts and it clashes with the rest of the song. Well, I get, yeah, but I, I mean, that's Jay, the, the reason why I appreciate it is because that's that's the. <laughs> Like this style of song is pretty much what was popular among like Filipinos in like the oh, okay. the, the late teeth. Like pretty much if you like, I actually tried to learn this on guitar because <laughs> well, cause it's it's only three chords. It's only three chords. So um, like uh, I like the song, but yeah, I just yeah, I just no, but like I, the rapping clash. Like no, that... if he did something more like Tablo does in the next song or one of the next songs, like it was maybe a lore, no, it's more definitely... laid back rap. It's definitely something that sort of came out of, or like came out of like his whole West Coast, like Asian, like community yeah, yeah. upbringing. Because like again, pretty much it, it, like among like Filipinos or Koreans or Asian, whatever. Like if you were if you were the guy that could play guitar and like sing like cool R and B songs to the girls, like <laughs> yeah. just like sploosh, man. Like you would get everyone. Uh, I mean, that's I like both parts of it. But I just feel like they don't really work that well. Well, I mean, the, the, the only thing is, is obviously, like, I looked up the lyrics. Like, it's really corny. Like, the song is like, oh, oh I, I love you. I, I, or, like, I, I messed up, girl. You know, take me back. I'm going to die without you. Like, pretty much, like, <laughs> that's how Jay Park wrote all his songs back in the day. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, yeah, the next song is an actual, like, really, like, sad one. It's, um, I'll Smile Even If It Hurts by Ladies Code. So, um, I, uh, the first thing that stuck out to me about this was it, it kind of sounded like a SNSD ballad to me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Which I, I'm, that's, I'm not complaining because I love their ballads. Yeah, so, so. again, again, for those that don't know, the, the whole, um, story behind Ladies Code is that they, they originally debuted with five? Yeah, it was five members. Yeah, five members, but, um... Uh, I think, like we mentioned in episode one, we mentioned um, yeah a couple episodes. Yeah, yeah uh, really they cool. lost Yoon B and Rise in a tragic car accident, and I believe this so, is yep. this is one of the first songs that they. This released. was the first song. This is yeah, the first so, thing that they did after coming back a year, mm-hmm. a year later. Um, yeah. they they did a concert because Rise is Japanese. Mm-hmm. Um, Jin like her dream was to uh, have them perform in Japan, so they did a tribute concert in Japan. Yeah, so. Um, this song is pretty much a tribute to them. If you look at the lyrics, it's just talking about like how they, you know, they're really sad that they lost mm-hmm. Yunbi and Rise, but you know they don't want them to, or they think that if they were just spend the rest of their lives, you know, being depressed or sad about it, they wouldn't, or yeah. they wouldn't want them living that way. So yeah, it's it's a really touching song. You know, you can't. Yep. It's it's it, it's pretty easy or it's pretty easy to just shed a tear when listening to the song when you consider yeah. you know the whole history and background behind it and it's definitely it definitely like brings up a lot of emotions and it's it's such a beautifully done song a very beautifully done song lyrically um you know the the, the vocals and everything so yep i follow the ladies code since debut so i i teared up listening to it today mm-hmm. it makes me sad 
Um, the next song is my favorite Tablo song. Actually, it's "Home" featuring Lee Soda. I I would say this is like the saddest song on the list. Yeah, well, because like, surprise. Or, uh, unlike the rest of the songs that have to, you know, the lyrical content has to do with you know a, a love, a lost lover, or, you know, like you know that sort of thing. I I feel this song has to do with you know just a lot of anxiety or just a lot of like self doubt which is pretty much you know a lot of what tablo tapped into around that time because again this is coming off the heels of the the tajin yo scandal so you know where he yep. it really affected him personally and i'm guessing you know he's just he's just really using these lyrics or these songs as a way of you know just venting his feelings out or just getting getting these get, getting these feelings like you know that might he doesn't really understand like onto a piece of paper you know you know so uh, it's i guess it's like a really therapeutic sort of thing but it's it's pretty yeah, it's one of my favorite songs like the piano like how bare the piano sounds yep. in the song yeah the piano so, parts are really good so amazing and just how even the vocal uh, yeah Sora's you know, these, these vocals insane. are like are haunting like you can yeah, hear exactly. the you can hear the um, degree of emotion in her voice yep. and just like it, it sounds like she's like crying and everything like it's it's very hard to do like convey that sort of emotion you know just through your voice so you know props to her you know uh, like wait is he sora a girl yeah, yeah i thought it was a guy no it's, a <laughs> it's a it's i think i believe she's he like was a, on roommates you watched roommates. she's like a, she's oh, like a, maybe i just forgot i believe she's like a she, she's like a like a drama actor or actress yeah, or something yeah, yeah. I think okay, she, she's so, an actress but yeah so but yeah the, 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 the this song uh, i guess personally uh, speaks to me a little bit because it's kind of like uh speaks on like social anxiety and stuff like that yeah, like, I, you don't want to you're afraid to like leave your room. Yeah, or That's just the whole thing is sort of like this is my home, leave me alone. Yeah, he just wants it's to like st- the English yeah, part. Yeah, he, he just wants to stay in like or or how like pretty much like he has no more comfort zone because you know he just he's just so unsure of himself. You know, I I can definitely relate. Yeah. You know, I deal with I deal with my fair share of anxiety and depression. So you know, it's it's definitely something I I def I appreciate Tablo for doing because there's you know as. As you know, like as shallow as you know, most K-pop like lyrical content is. You know, I, I do appreciate how, you know, it, it it definitely shows how great of a lyricist Tablo mm-hmm. is with the, with these kind of songs. Yeah, yeah um, the... if if you if you like the Fever's End album, I suggest you read his book Pieces of You because mm-hmm. it's definitely it's like it's like that, but in like a collection of short stories, he yeah. shows that same sort of message. Yeah, yeah that and... was the first time I heard the song and. Yeah, it's really, really. Good. Yeah, no, and again, it's just like she, like all this sort of stuff, just shows like how willingly vulnerable he's able to make himself. So I really, uh, I, that's why, it's why you know Tablo is one of my favorites now. So, um, the next song is uh, "Eyes, Nose, Lips" by Taeyang. <laughs> um, so between like Taeyang's like uh, two major albums, I think I'd like this. Uh, between his like two biggest singles, uh, "Eyes, Nose, Lips" and "Wedding Dress," I probably like this song better than "Wedding Dress" because "Wedding Dress" yeah, is I kind do. of. Because wedding dress is kind of played out at this point, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> or just I can't take it seriously anymore because it's just really yeah. corny. <laughs> or just like well, really... is it who is who is he like similar to like what, in the what? choreography? Like it's who's de- the guy who does the fedora and stuff? Rain. Rain. It's definitely no, no, no. like an American uh, artist who does oh. that. Like Usher? <laughs> or yeah, like like maybe it's like a, it's Usher, an Usher song kind of. Yeah, but like... yeah, I saw his lips is pretty like. More laid back than um, wedding dress was. But... I mean, the music video is not that much less corny. It's just shirtless Taehyung, yeah. <laughs> and then he big... burns a picture of a girl. <laughs> no, he, yeah. he burns a picture is of his girlfriend. Yeah, is that, wait, is, that was, is that his current? Was, was that his Hyori. girlfriend at the time? Yeah, that that's Min, Min Hyori. <laughs> I, I was curious. I was like, is that Min Hyori? And... Like was this I sending a message was, or whatever or that like that was I don't know. Girlfriend. You you they're definitely I'm sure some netizens are looking too that. deeply into that and are like, "Oh my well, god." I, I think you revealed well, that he actually wrote the song about her, which okay. is oh. funny. So that's uh, not any cheese less cheese even. <laughs> yeah. Is. Like again, the so yeah, the lyrics are like of trying to get over a past love and all that sort of stuff. Um I think Tang's the pretty much the master or or uh, he's pretty good at sad songs. He <laughs> a lot of or a lot of his album tracks tend to deal with these sort of things. With I mean like but it it kind of blows my mind considering how like popular Taeyang is. So Yeah. But, um Oh, speaking uh, of Eyes Nose Lips, check out Tablo's version. Yeah, the Tablo ver- I actually Oh, Tablo has a version of it? Yeah I, yeah, I actually prefer the Tableau uh, version, but I didn't yeah, want to. I, I didn't want to have two of what from one artist on this list. But yeah, no, the Tableau, the Tableau version is pretty like. Or and on that same note, check out the Lydia Peck version. Um, 
And the Octong musician version. <laughs> yeah, they, like pretty Just much. Just look up literally every cover. Yeah, no, of pretty song much. Like Eyes, Nose, Lips is, is such a good song that pretty much like all the covers of it are just so good. You know that random. Oh, dude also, that also check out. YouTube. Wait, wait. Look, the random dude. Just any random dude that has two subs on YouTube, check out his version. Yeah. Oh wait. Actually, I actually saw a cover on YouTube. It was just this kid, this Korean kid. He's like sitting at a desk. Like seemingly, I don't think he was really studying, but it looked like he was studying, and he was just singing ice those lips. <laughs> <laughs> like he had the instrumental playing on his phone, he was just singing it like singing. effortlessly while Pretty he was cool. studying. <laughs> okay, yeah, so yeah. the next song is um, "Eleven Eleven by Tan, and yes. so good. Uh, I don't say this lightly because I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of K- favorite K-pop songs, but "Eleven Eleven might be one of my f- most favorite K-pop songs. Period. Yeah, because uh, it's. I, I I it's really I guess it's the the sort of style of music I, I love the most the sort of just like it's almost a, like a west like style like acoustic song like yeah acoustic, yeah yeah so uh, I, I love acoustic guitar songs um, the acoustic version of the song is awesome like the acoustic live version yeah it's yeah, really I really, really love that and the, the music video is pretty good too and um or, Tan looks amazing in it. <laughs> well, one. But, yeah. yeah, I did I, say it, it was the most unrealistic music video ever. Because how could anyone break up with Tan? Yeah. yeah. What the <laughs> hell? Like, what's wrong with that guy? Yeah. It's so. Um, I mean, Beckyun did. Beckyun did it. But I mean, it's because they were too busy. It's not like they don't. Uh, yeah. I'm hundred percent. No, I, sh- I. I think it was because of fans. Honestly, I was gonna say yeah, it's because yeah, of fans. You would ask me. I'm sure. I'm sure they it's still definitely because of fans. And again, like I said, I think I mentioned this before. I wouldn't be surprised that it, she found a lot of, like. Baekhyun in this song like there's so many lyrics like the lyrics like fit so perfectly with this like it but for a sad song it's pretty optimistic if you look at the lyrics or it's just yeah you know like will i forget about you you know it's just like her like wondering you know like what's going to happen in my life now that i don't have you in it you know am i gonna forget about you am i gonna miss you or um I guess just uh, as someone that that's two years removed from uh, my own breakup, I guess it just it, it came at a point where it came at a point where it's still like hits way too close to home. Um, like there's just these like the lyrics just convey these emotions of uh, or like the line uh, translated into English is, but like the two hands on the cl- of the clock in my heart, I keep lingering in the same place. You know, it's just that's just exactly how you feel after a breakup, where you just feel so so stagnant and you know just you know you, you don't feel like your life is going anywhere but you know again I, I do appreciate how positive it is it's just like um like I, like the at the end of the chorus is like i'll get over you or just like you know just like ho- hoping that hoping that she will move on and you know i hope i really hope that there's like there isn't way too much or we're, i'm not reading too much into like this song when it comes to tans you know i just i just hope that one day she'll be happy because i don't want uh i don't want all these you know like stupid fans to rob her of her happiness because they don't think that oh she's know. calling bitches out on <laughs> oh yeah and <laughs> really like no. she's not letting anyone get to her anymore she's calling them out it's great oh well i mean yeah, no, I, she'll like reply to haters sometimes. yeah she, like she did that recently yeah she was like calling yeah calling out haters it was great yeah so i, I like uh, like as weird as it sounds like this this kind of stuff is kind of like a buy it like makes Tay Tay in a bias record for me because I just don't want anyone to hurt from her. She's too precious. Like who would who would ever She's like hate anything leader. about Tayan? Oh uh, but well, yeah. Where where we go? Here's her wife. <laughs> yeah, she's still yeah. happy for forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tayney for life. Um but yeah, like literally that song, it came out probably like like four months ago now. <laughs> like I've li- I've already listened to it like hundreds of times. Yeah, since no, then, I, I, like, I I I there's I, I I've I had still more, listen to it all the time. I've had more than one night where I fell asleep to that song just because it's so it's that kind of like really like mood sort of thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tana is um, by far my favorite voice. Like, yeah, her voice, her to. her voice in this song is so beautiful. Or like the or like I even forgot to mention like the vocalization in the the chorus, like the na 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 na, like that sort of part. Yeah. Like it's so like. You can like you can so imagine someone singing this and just you know having to hold back the tears as they sing like the the vocalizations like I I I, I this is probably like one of the most like I, I've I've identified with a K-pop song ever so I, I, Def- I definitely my favorite part of it is how like delicate her voice sounds throughout yeah the whole thing. yeah yep. yeah it's it's so delicate and so like just like yeah it's perfect um it's so amazing. the last the last song on the list would be uh, empty by winner so. 
I actually, this is the only winter song I've ever listened to. Oh, seriously? <laughs> this is the first winter song I've ever listened to. Oh my god. So, All right, both of you need to listen to both their albums because they're really good. Okay, because um, like it came up uh on my on my Nihon Hallyu uh Spotify playlist. It came up in the recommended songs. So I'm just like, oh, I like this. It sounds like it's, it kind of sounds like Big Bang ish. So yeah, yeah, I was gonna say it sounded very much like a Big Bang song to me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So if you take Winner and Icon, Winner is like the uh. Like the sad song side of Big Bang, okay, Icon so is like the, the Haru hype Haru song. And the blue so I probably I probably like Winner more than Icon. Yeah, then. same. Yep. So yeah, uh, this song again, just like the 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 harmonies are really good, the vocals are really good, or like the the falsetto part in the during the chorus. So yeah, it's pretty. It, they're pretty talented or vocal wise. So my favorite part is uh, I think it's Mino who does the first part in the beginning. His like deep voice doing like. I don't know if it's auto tune or like put through a filter or something, but like the way it sounds, that's my favorite part. Yeah, like, it, 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 it sounds out. a lot like like uh, like a top like level like rap sort of or like yeah. how his whose voice sounds. So yeah, I, I really love this song and I re- I need to look up more winner. Yep. But yeah, that's um I think that's yeah that's the whole list of uh my eleven uh emo ass k-pop songs so <laughs> if you ever if you'll ever happy need valentine's it day. happy valentine's day but not in se- on all seriousness don't take this shit too seriously valentine's day is such a manufactured holiday you know you don't need to have a valentine <laughs> or whatever if you're like a little if you're like a younger viewer you know don't worry about it uh so, uh, you know i always i forget it happens like yeah, i don't I even notice presentation for my comm class no, I, that day no, you, know, you know what you know jokes on me though i broke up i broke up with my girlfriend the day before valentine's day <laughs> no that's not a joke that, that's like strategic planning yeah, hell cool. yeah I, I i don't need that shit so also uh, valentine's day doesn't matter it's just uh card eve card eve <laughs> it's yeah, the day true. before card new song Okay. That's all that matters. Oh, yeah. Or, I know, so I mean, like, who cares about Valentine's Day when you have White Day? Well, that could be another topic on its own, but. I mean, there's also Black Day, though, which is a sad version of White Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, anyways, uh, topic two, or not topic two, topic three, oh, three. is Andrew's other, other topic. topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, have to, we have to make this fit in somehow. Uh, so, since Nate was telling stories about. Um, his adventures in Korea. I decided uh, that kind of reminded me of like, or just in, uh, inspired me to tell stories about uh, my time in Maple Story. <laughs> so for those that don't know, Maple Story. Uh, well, actually, for, first for those that don't know, we all found each other through uh, a gaming like Facebook group. So we we all love video games here. Like my though. Yep. MMOs is like sort of well, like just look behind you. There's like yeah, a then I have, like you can see all like, the amiibos. Yeah, yeah, like I have I have more amiibos. I have more amiibos than I do like I don't know socks or whatever. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, for the people that don't know, um, Maple Story is this uh, free to play MMO um, made by um, Wizet and published by Nexon. Uh, Nexon. So yeah. it's it would fall under the category of uh, what we call Korean grinder. Um, uh, MMOs because pretty much it's like what's really popular in Korea are free to play games where all you do is just kill mobs over and <laughs> over and over and over See, again. For that's y- why when they westernize games nowadays, like for the modern ones, they usually take out on any grinding. They make it so leveling up. Yeah, easier. so yeah, yeah like yeah, um, because <laughs> Western players hate grinding. Yeah, like uh, I, I, I didn't like it at first. I, I didn't really want to get into it at first because it was just, from what I heard, it was really grindy. But um, again, going back to episode one where I mentioned Lizelle, like the the girl that really got got me into K-pop first. She, she's the one that introduced me to Maple Story, and yeah, so. Um, <laughs> Pretty much, I I felt kind of I felt kind of inferior because here I was just like this level one like uh, so if I remember correctly I think my class was warrior I just picked like the most generic like ha- like slash like hack and slash class or whatever um so or just a just as a side note like how the combat worked in works in Maple Story is that you you what. <laughs> I just thought of something. I'll mention it after. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the, the combat in Maple Story is uh, it's not like a like a WoW or whatever where it's like uh, right clicking or alt alt tabbing that sort of thing. It's where you like 
uh, it's more of like an action RPG where like, it's like you have a to... beat 'em up side. Yeah, slide, yeah. So it's a sort of a beat 'em up side scroller with like chibi characters. So here <laughs> I am. I was think I was like a junior in high school at this point. I'm just like, yeah, I'm pretty good at video games, and I'm getting, I'm having like this 13 year old girl teach me how to play an MMO. So <laughs> I felt pretty <laughs> inferior at that point. No, she was pretty good at it. Um, so like from time to time, or like I, I'd, I'd only. I'd get to play it like well, obviously when I had free time or whatever. Or um, I guess what really b- brought this up for me is because I there was most of my play time was during winter, and there was um one this one instance I remember in particular where there was a huge snowstorm and I didn't have school for like three days, and all Lizelle and I did was just play Maple Story <laughs> until <laughs> until three in the morning, and it, it it's it, it's pretty fitting that today like we um here in Jersey we got like. Uh, we got like eight, eight, pl- pl- uh, yeah, no, it, pretty close to eight inches. So like, yeah, I had to go shovel a little earlier today. That's, th- that's, that's nothing to you guys. I know. Cause you live in, <laughs> yeah, you live in the middle <laughs> of nowhere. So, but Freaking, uh, I live in the throat of the world up here in college. No, nah, but eight to 10 and... inches pretty much shuts down New York, New York and Jersey. So yeah. So, or, or, or there was one, there was one instance I remember that, uh, so I was trying to do like, I think it was a class specific quest that I did and so we went to we went through the area and um I think it was just like oh you had to kill because most of the quest in maple story is like oh kill 10 like slimes these, or whatever yeah. and yeah. you have to collect you have to collect like 10 like beads or whatever but the thing is though not every not every slime or not every enemy would drop the item so you'd have to kill like 30 40 you'd have to go in a while until you get lucky enough to get the drop so I did well. I think I did like what the over the class was, and I think I, or the I forget the name of the uh, like the part of the world I was in. Um, like it's kind of like a fantasy world, but there was like a there was like one city that had like it was like a night time. It was always nighttime, and it was like an urban city or whatever. So, um, I was going to c- um, complete the quest there, and the guy that I was supposed to report to wasn't there. So I'm just like, okay, maybe something's wrong. Like, Cause like Maple Story was pretty notable for like visual bugs or whatever. So I'm just like, okay, what if I log out and log back in? Still not, there. Still not there. And then, okay, like, okay, what if I leave the screen and come back onto the screen? Still not Your there. Your file is fricked. <laughs> yeah, no. So I, I, I looked up at the wiki and he's like, yep, this quest is broken. And I'm just like, so I spent the past hour killing these like useless slimes for nothing. <laughs> Yeah, so I was pretty pissed, but I, I I never had the patience to, or I, I never played long enough to, uh, um, see when they or finish the quest to when they actually fix the bug. So, yeah. Um. All right. So the one thing I want to mention is the greatest video on all of YouTube, and it features this <laughs> Korean man, this Korean kid, and he's dancing. He's he's doing amazing popping while singing. The Maple Story theme. Maple Satori. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the greatest video ever. We have to, you have to, if you have never yeah, seen we're putting, that video, putting, we're gonna put that in the description. Oh my god! So yeah, um, what else did I do? In, or, no, so I, again, I being a like a high school kid having to do a lot of homework. I didn't get much time to play it until the summer. And no, in the summer I went ham. Like I'd, I'd play until like six in the morning, like every weekday. I don't think I've ever played a game till no, actually, no, no, no. Cause I played League of Legends till six in the morning. No, because that that's, that's, that's what happened to my, that's what happened. Like Maple Story ruined my sleep schedule to the point where I'd I'd be awake or I'd play Maple Story till six a.m., fall asleep, wake up at like four, and then just go back to playing Maple Story again. I oh think I God. so basically you were an MMO addict. Yeah, no, I was a real I was a legitimate <laughs> MMO addict. It was really bad, and that was the first time I ever got a, like even when I like. Even as a middle schooler in my heyday when I played RuneScape, I never got addicted that bad. But and no, the thing is though, again, with it's a Korean grinding RPG, so I was like for six, seven hours straight, all I was doing was just killing like <laughs> hitting their, monsters, their, yeah. yeah, hitting mobs over and over and over again. So yeah, I, I think just, I played. I think I played it for like two days and realized <laughs> I do not like that type of game because yeah. it was boring as hell. You know how you want to know how long I lasted in Maple Story? What? Like five minutes because I didn't like the controls. <laughs> Yeah, no, the controls are pretty weird, but no. And well, there's no like arrow keys are to move. And then yeah, it's it, it, it was like yeah, arrow keys are move, and then you attack with like a control or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah like what the heck? 
Yeah, it was pretty weird, but I mean, it, it was it was pretty fun. Or I think what made it fun was playing with Lizelle, because she, because I if I played it yeah, by myself, play yeah, it yeah, pretty much. Yeah, if, I think that's standard fare with any MMO. If you start by yourself, it's you're gonna, it's gonna be pretty hard because you don't know anyone or you don't know you're, you're so new to everything. But you know, it. it I, I, shout out to Lizelle for introducing or for ruining my life for like two months by with, uh, introducing me to Maple Story. Like it got to the point where I was playing more than she was. But the thing <laughs> is, though, like. She's like, geez, chill out with the Maple Story. No, but it, it, like <laughs> the thing is, it, it takes so long to level in Maple Story. Like the, I don't know if there, I don't think there was a limit for levels. So pretty much it went from like zero to two hundred, like fifty or whatever. And so, Ugh. yeah, I, I, I think the highest I ever got was like probably like thirty or forty because after a certain point you'd have to kill like tens of thousands of like. Just level up once. Yeah, just to level up once or whatever. But you know, it was it was a really fun. It was a really fun game. I mean, they had like the different like buying and selling mechanics, or you know, like the, the different quests. Uh, there there was also a marriage mechanic, and I believe it was tied to a quest because I remember um a lot of you have to marry someone, and mm-hmm. then they give you something. Yeah, they give you a special item, or you get a special like tag if you say you're you're married to someone or whatever. But you know, and, and I, I think I love the arts, or the, the art style is very Korean, like very Korean, like yeah, just, yeah, just like a really like almost like Cartoon. chibi art style. Yep. And yeah. I remember, yep. I remember the funniest thing you could do is just like you press like control and like F one or whatever, you can make different faces. Like you could like make <laughs> like a shocked face or a bored face or whatever. So, um. Yeah, like, uh, what you were saying about, like, MMOs being f- more fun with friends, like, uh, the only MMO I've really, like, played for a really, really long time is, uh, Terra, which is another Korean MMO. Yeah, like, Korean uh, MMOs are really popular, surprisingly. Yeah, well, because Terra was, like, the first of its kind, really, where it's had, like, action combat. Yeah. But it was in, like, a traditional MMO world with the same t- sort of type of quest. Yeah, me and my friends probably put, like, well, all of us combined would probably be, like, 500 hours, but, like... Yeah, we probably all each played like like between fifty and a hundred hours to playing on oh, no. depending on who it is. There were another one of my friends was at one point he was really into Mabinogi. Have you heard? Oh of Oh my that? god, <laughs> I've played it. It's, I've heard of it. It's but I don't super know what it old and like <laughs> it's super old and like bad. <laughs> yeah, today, no, for it, today's standards. Yeah, it was pretty. It was it was pretty like low <laughs> low quality. So um, but yeah, uh, Korean... all I remember about it is that I think. Tiffany had a uh, CF for it. <laughs> what? That, yeah, a long time ago. Well, she's yeah. like inside this house, and then they're like, "Hey, you can do all this stuff in Mabinogi. You can just live in in the world and have your own house and stuff." Came up. Do the stars do a lot of CFs for games? Yeah, yes, I know. Well, like Girls sudden attacks, and... huge, which for is like bladed... an FPS. Yeah, for like Bladed Soul, that other another game, yep. Korean MMO. Like yep. for the Chinese version of the game, they released a Chinese version of their song Soul from their Mr. Mr. mini album. Wow, and even then, I didn't know that. Yeah, for like uh, Massive Attack, which is an FPS, like a Counter Strike type FPS, there are skins of like Twice. You can be a Twice member murdering people <laughs> and stuff like <laughs> Wait, that. What? Just yeah, you didn't look, look up, kill look up twice massive. I think it's massive attack. It's the game. It's one of those like Korean Counter Strike uh, free, like uh, free to play first person shooters. Um, but yeah, you can be like any member of Twice. You could be Sana just murdering people with it. <laughs> oh, I, I I need to look this up. Okay, so I'll, I'll I'll go. Are there servers available in the United States, or is I, I it just know. a? I don't know, that, dude. If there are, we usually... should just play it and like yeah, upload no. one episode of it. You no, know, that's that's. The... <laughs> That's a sad thing though, because a lot of these a lot of these Korean MMOs do amazing promotions, like or um sort out or there was a sort out online um Maple Story promotion, but I think that was actually released here in America. But yeah, no, there's there's some things that only get released in Korea for whatever reason, and you know it's, yeah. it it sucks, but. Yeah, no, I think they probably be... figure they won't profit enough from the localization costs. Yeah, whatnot. yeah, but yeah, that's a, that's actually a good idea. Like one day, one day when we have free time, we'll just we'll just let's just pick up a random Korean MMO and just like do a, like a mini let's play or just like a like a report of how it was or whatever. So, yeah, Korean MMO. Gotta MMOs. play the Korean version and then connect to the Korean server. So <laughs> Yo, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna or, flame us so hard. <laughs> or we just need to get into the Korean Overwatch servers and play with nine muses. <laughs> Oh, and I yeah, loves yeah, yeah. Overwatch. Honestly, we'd probably get wrecked by the Korean players. Oh, yeah. probably. Yeah, we definitely would. No, I don't play on PC, so I would definitely get wrecked. Oh, it's not that oh, hard. Yeah. Come on. Well, he'd be play on his, I mean, on his granted, PC I'm with an Xbox I'm a Mercy controller. Main, so I don't really need to be able yeah, to Yeah, same. I'm a Mercy main, too. So. Oh, well, well, actually, no. Well, I, I, 
Yeah, yeah, we'd, we'd have to figure. Yeah, actually, no, a mercy main, unless somebody doesn't feel like tanking. In which case, I'm just like, damn it, fine, I'll just pick Reinhardt. Well, oh. I play as Diva, so I'll be our tank. There we okay. go. Okay. <laughs> actually, it's I didn't even intend to make Diva my main. I'm mean, she's literally just the character I'm really that good reminds with. Reminds me, I need to go buy a bunch of boxes to get her. Yeah, because we did it because the the, the handbook Diva ends thing. To Monday. Oh no! I, I need know. to. Yeah, I'm, I'll I'll log in after we end. We get off. <laughs> So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, any other uh, things you'd like to mention? Uh, no, no, nope. that's that's pretty much it. You know, um, but yeah, Maple Story was just like a pretty interesting period in my life where I got sucked away, and yeah, it's no, it's definitely something that I have like fond memories of, especially with Lizelle. So yeah, shout outs to you, Lizelle, for okay. ruining my life. <laughs> All right, so I guess. Maple story. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we could probably uh, move into my topic. I guess I think it's gonna be. I think it might be long, but depending on how much you guys wrote. I don't down actually for it, have but, too uh, much. So oh. yeah, no, I have a few. I I have a bunch. Of stuff I have like wrote four. Down, so okay, you'll carry the you'll carry the topic. So. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're gonna be going into my topic, which was the uh, sort of like it's similar to. I think it was last week or the week before the uh, um, predictions for 2017. This is going to be our predictions for K-pops over the next five years, like where it's going to be at that point. Because sort of uh, a thing that I recently noticed, I guess everyone sort of like passively did, but I was like looking at it, I was thinking about it, and everything has sort of exploded since like I'd say probably like 2007. It's been yeah. like growing. Oh, yeah, definitely like really fast and uh like the hollywood wave like was in full speed by that point i'd say mm. like you know with like uh tvxq and then uh, girls generation after 2009 and stuff like that yep. um so it's been like quickly growing more and more uh ever since like you know the start of the hollywood wave so i think and every time there's like sort of a viral video that comes up or anything like that it usually ramps up like the first one i'd say of note was like tvxq's Marotic. like that became like a huge thing all over asia oh. yeah and you know like at one point tvxq was the biggest uh like boy band of in the world hey, didn't you say that they had like a number one fan club at one point or something like yeah that? they had the most uh they had the biggest fan club for any music group like in the whole world at one point <laughs> Because they're so big all across Asia. So, like, the first, uh, I'd say, like, the first effects of the Hollywood wave was just within Asia. Like, China, Japan, Southeast yeah, Asia, Philippines, Southeast. stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, that was sort of the first stage. And uh, so, going off of that, it's uh, it kept going like that, I guess, until, like, uh, 2012. When we saw Gangnam Style in July. I believe that's when it was. And yeah, and no, like. Oh yeah, that's another concert I went to. I saw Psy perform Gangnam Style. Are you serious? What the hell? <laughs> I totally that's forgot crazy. about that. So a quick tangent. Uh, it was, uh, in like, like a town square basically for Seoul, like outside of like their capital. It's like a gorilla something. concert. No, no, this was like a big concert. Uh, you can actually look up pictures of it. Uh, the square held, um, I want to say, fifty-five thousand people wow and two hundred and fifty thousand people showed up to this concert two hundred fifty thousand people were at this concert that's it like was the... like 90 degrees and it was in an open outdoor thing like there was nothing it was literally outside and it was like 90 degrees because of all the people we saw gangnam style and left because we couldn't deal with two hundred fifty thousand people we were so far away too. Like it was insane. Like you can't see it. That's actually kind of crazy Psy to be in Korea while Gangnam Style is in like full swing. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I thought it was yeah. literally so everywhere. everywhere. You're never gonna experience that again. You that's 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 a once in a lifetime experience probably. But so. yeah, it, uh, you can see pictures of it online of like a helicopter shot of how many people were there. It's insane. Indeed. Yeah. So, anyways, like I guess with the introduction of you know size Gangnam Style, like you know it's. I guess Sai is kind of an interesting thing because he is like very unique within K-pop. We don't really have anybody else mm -hmm. like yeah. him. Yeah, like you know, he's like uh, he's like a comedian and a performer at the yeah. same time. Yeah, it's like half so parody. He, yeah, like, yeah. So he's like a parody of himself, though. Like he's not even yeah, making yeah. fun of anything. Yeah. He's making fun of himself for the most part. Yep. Which you know, it, it's 
pretty easy for that kind of humor to catch on anywhere. Yeah, definitely. And on top of that, all his music is like super catchy. Mm-hmm. I guess Gangnam Style was probably like the first one that was like super caught on. Like even in Korea, he wasn't that popular beforehand. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's crazy to see how much success that brought him, even in Korea. So yeah, so I think uh, sort of the growth for K-pop over the next you know few years will be uh, due to some sort of if I. Uh, if all right so the first time so say like there was like a rate it was going up at like a steady rate uh the sort of the population of k-pop as a whole korean culture as a whole internationally then once Gong, gangnam style came along like it you know that's like a catalyst into yeah. its uh sort of growth and it started to grow at like exponential rates because if you think about it like um even just from 2012 to today k-pop is probably like double this production value yeah no like yeah. Definitely. because they realized they, they're songs. making so much money because of the international sort of appeal it has now yep yeah so like that's the one thing i was uh thinking about at korean club like this week on tuesday we were looking at like it came up like uh tvxq's purple line you know that really bad line <laughs> in it <laughs> When uh, Yukshun says, I really want to touch myself. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Lord, I remember the, that one. The, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Korean students, they didn't, they like, I'm assuming they didn't know English when that song first came out. So, so they, they just realize. didn't realize it. And yeah. I was like, there's a really, really bad English line. And they're like, really? Because they knew that song really well. <laughs> yeah. Like, and like, we played it for them. It was really funny. So anyways, I was thinking like, as we were watching that and like Merotic and stuff, how the, uh, since then since like the first stage to the second stage to the upcoming third stage i guess of you know sort of different catalysts and what's uh accelerating the growth of is like the production yeah twice or card twice and be... card will take over the world <laughs> probably twice, though. that's my only prediction <laughs> okay i'm gonna say one of Not the really, next but... uh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna get to that in a second but um yeah like the production values is what's what's changing every time like uh the faster the rate that it's growing, the uh, bigger the production values are going to be <laughs> and the bigger it's going to grow. So I think they sort of see the more money we put into these uh, these groups, the more we're going to make also, typically. Uh, like, JYP is putting, like, tons and tons of money into Twice. Like, he knows. Yep. He, An astronomical like, amount of money. Yeah, like, I. that's why I can't believe that one group, uh, Luna, that's coming out, they spent oh, so uh, much money yeah, on it. They're, they're like, I've never even heard of their this... company. Where are they getting no idea. this money? <laughs> I don't know. I wonder Should if they've got, like... a song soon. Yeah, but I mean... Yeah, but don't they not have a debut until, like, the end of the oh, year? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, they're, they have new singles for each member, all 12, for a year until October when they debut. I mean, they better, they better be good if they spent so much money on them. Yeah. Otherwise, they're going to be in a huge deficit to uh, pay back any donors or stockholders or whatever that is funding it, whatever. Yeah. Because I've literally never heard of this small company, so they must have somebody funding them. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, I think uh, my prediction sort of is K-pop will continue to grow, possibly even faster, if we get another smash hit like Gangnam Style. And I think if any group is going to do it, <laughs> we'll see. I we'll wish. see. No, but honestly, if I were to be honest about it, it's either going to be a group like BTS with a sort of a group, uh, like a song that just catches on in the mainstream. Yeah. Not because it's funny or anything, but because of like. It's just uh, popular appeal. Like, yeah. Yeah, like like BTS is a group that's sort of like they're growing huge, uh, internationally, because mm-hmm. they have that sort of appeal. Like with American audiences, I think especially, they're starting to gain a lot of. Uh, you know respect because i can't go anywhere any video on youtube without seeing somebody talking about bts Army? in the yeah. comments yep. yeah like, it's, hashtag like, you'll be watching you're watching a kind of funny video Army. Be like, oh my Army god represent. doesn't greg remind me of of jungkook in that in this one second or oh like, my god no. what the hell hashtag <laughs> army brazil that, actually, hashtag yeah. army philippines <laughs> yeah so like uh Yeah, I think BTS would with their, like, sort of hip-hop style. Like, I think even though they're a boy band, they'd still get respect among mainstream audiences. Yeah. Yeah. And they won't get, like, One Direction out of the picture. Yeah. But, I mean, One Direction was popular. Come on. Like... Yeah, they're popular, but I think only among, like, female 
uh, fans. You know what I mean? No, I know a lot of I know a lot of guys that love One Direction. Like I, 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 I like tertiary. Just straight up, like every every single song they make. Yeah, no, I know a lot of I know a lot of guys that love One Direction. Because I know that one recent song they made was uh, like I thought was pretty decent. But anyways, uh, like their older stuff was just too boy bandy, I guess. Yeah, I guess. But I think BTS would be have a more uh, possible way of like catching on the main screen that is yeah. if they can and get a good song mm-hmm. that does penetrate like they just need one famous person in america to share it to make it spread because that's what happened with gangnam style <laughs> or i guess what mm-hmm. the size of my prediction i'm predicting that somewhere within the next five years why a, a song is gonna hit top 40 so uh, one uh, a k-pop song is gonna get some top 40 radio airplay because i mean if you saw remember remember the 21 um the Microsoft Surface commercial where I am the yeah, best. Yeah, I am the best. I am the best at a resurgence um, in um, the K-pop. That was during that was during the Super Bowl, wasn't it? No, it was, like, it was during the NFL, like, 2014-2013 NFL season oh, okay. or whatever. So, or, you know, it was in 2014-2015 because I, I was already in this house. But, yeah, um, I am the best uh, had a resurgence in both Korea because, of, obviously, it was an already popular song. But also in here in the United States, it started charting again. So, like, they re-released a, they re-released a radio, like, single version of it so that... Um, because, oh, is that what that was for? Yeah, because I was wondering like why yeah, iTunes because is a the, single for "I'm the Best" when yeah, it was already an the, album. Because that the, 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 the song drew um got so popular, um mm-hmm. because of that Microsoft Surface commercial. Uh, uh, funny side story. Um, uh, there was a Boston radio station that censored the song because. What? Oh, they thought they, they, got they, were saying, they thought they thought they were saying the N word, but. Shake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Pretty it just funny. goes to show how like how much tell how, how far we still have to go for people to understand like what they're saying in Korean. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah, but yeah, no, I definitely I, I believe that we'll get another we'll get another huge Gangnam Gang, uh, Gangnam style level like popularity out of a uh, out of a song. I don't know I don't know who it's gonna come from, but there will be there will be one in five years. Yeah, uh, kind of uh, well, just on top of like the huge growth and everything was I was saying more international concerts yeah um, definitely so because like i mean if you look even just for kcon we had new york and la for four or five years now maybe yeah and now they got like they, mexico they've Paris. added more and more yeah so like they added dubai. toronto eventually uh last year they added paris yeah they added dubai at some point and now this year we have mexico so i think we're gonna get more kcons and more international concerts i mean we already have a lot of groups that Andrew's just going to see in the next month. Yeah, and a half. I yeah. Mean, so we got EXO, uh, Chinese coming. Although I don't think any yeah, of us are seeing Chinese. Yeah, they're not. They're uh, not Hyo, coming to New York. Yo, in uh, Yana. So like, yeah, we're. Yeah, we'll that's see. That's just the beginning of this year. Um, so. another or another just. This might be one of my crazier predictions, but I believe that it might not necessarily have to do with K-pop, but, um. I believe somebody in the West is going to try to emulate the the formula that K-pop sort of presents, like oh, I, like, like, like a boy band or something. Yeah, I believe I believe trainees. Yeah, I'm a hundred percent sure that somebody's going to try it in the West within the next five years because again, K-pop is so popular at this point that I'm sure somebody's like, hey, you know, why don't we try to emulate that sort of like style of uh, making music here in the West? And I mean, we kind of we've if, kind of had if, it before, but not to the extent actually, of like. If I were to think about it, actually, I think a similar thing is happening in the U.S. that is in Korea. Like, girl groups are coming, becoming more popular. Yeah. Because, uh, like, One Direction's, like, sort of taming down, well, cause I one, guess. Well, because, uh, yeah, because One Direction had... They lost had, the member, I think. Yeah, they lost... Ever yeah. since they lost Zane, and because they, they've been touring nonstop for something like three or four years, so they're taking a break right yeah. now and doing solo stuff, so... So, I think, like, as they went down Fifth Harmony and Little Mix, those two groups were sort of going up, mostly Fifth Harmony. Yeah, Fifth Harmony's really and, popular. I th- yeah, cause like there, there's, I don't know how they're if they're gonna recover from losing their member either. Yeah, I don't know. Which I heard about, like my friend was talking about, cause he's a huge fan. Should of Should I add that to the rip list? <laughs> no. So he's, <laughs> he's an not K-pop. fan. He'll be like her, and he hates the rest of the group. Well, he doesn't hate the rest of the group. He just doesn't really care that much. Yeah, about but that. again, yeah, again, I, I, and he loves their music. I, 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 I will. I, so I could see, anyways, I could see if they do like, uh, like. Uh, repeat that formula i could see it being like a girl group that's like very uh you know produced <laughs> yeah like beautiful produced perfect that kind of stuff yeah because again we're, we're it's sort of there's a it, it it's different to how most western like 
boy groups or girl groups sort of come which just like how oh they knew each other before they got signed and all that sort of thing yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's usually typical western music but again i i could see I mean, it. then again one direction and uh, fifth harmony both yeah, didn't but, know each other beforehand because they oh, were yeah, put together in a music show yeah they, they 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 all they both came together because of the 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 british x factor but again i i, I could see something like that happening where it's just i think fifth harmony is american x factor but yeah well, yeah certain. yeah so like British and American X factors respectively, but yeah, I, I I see this sort of formula working here in the United States, and somebody is going to try to cash in on it because of just how popular K-pop is becoming. Yep, I th- yeah, actually, I think since uh, I think Simon Cowell formed both of them, I think he would be, I think he could actually be one of the people that really yeah, no, I would, the JYP of yeah, no, I would not the be surprised Western if, music industry. Yeah, I would yeah, not be like, surprised if he's uh, he, he's actually considering or he's ever considered, you know, making his own or forming a One Direction esque uh, K-pop group or just like or that sort of uh, type of actually, thing. Actually, I wonder if he's ever thought about trying to just create like a branch of his company in Korea to for produce I mean, music he's, or he's something because it's successful. a huge it's a huge market. Yeah, he's very yeah. successful, but again, we'll have to see we'll ha- we'll have to see how. Well, how well he could he would be able to penetrate a Korean market with so many like different companies and everything. But or, again, he has you know the, like you said emulate their formula and our thing as like an experiment. Yeah, but again, yeah. But I could see Simon Cowell or some huge like Western producer like even how like starting their own K-pop group with the intention of uh with the intention of mar- marketing marketing them internationally because again like pretty much if you, if there's an I could see, I, I could see like a huge, like n- maybe not like non-Korean like entertainment company like trying to break into the the, the K-pop market even. So yeah. yeah, I think Japanese companies are already doing like Sony. Yeah, I, I, Sony's like the only one I know of. Like they own Crayon Pop and yeah, oh really? Whatnot, I didn't but know that. I, I yeah, they're like Crayon Pop has like four companies <laughs> or something. Yeah, so. but you can you can definitely tell that the sort of like Japanese music influence in their music. So yeah, yeah. Um, just just another one that I wanted to mention is I believe uh, I, it's not really too like crazy of a prediction or where, where I see K-pop in five years is that I we're probably we're I think we're gonna get a tonal shift away from EDM at one point or another. Some other some other huge like trend is gonna pop up in Western music that uh, started. Uh, my prediction for that would be shift towards R and B because I yeah, can already no, see it. Currently. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So that like something something like, like the new like modern R and B. Yeah, don't know no, like something like, it, I I believe because again like. If you if you look into like what trends are popular right now in the West, like or just in general, like West, like fashion is very '90s. Um, you know, like all, all this sort of stuff, like colors are very minimalist, very '90s, that sort of thing. Like I 100% believe, like yeah, like the music will go back to that sort of R&B thing, and I mean that R&B like '90s style, um, yeah. sort of thing. It you can already hear it in something like uh, Cave Me In. Because that's 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 yeah. exactly the that's exactly the sort of like yep. style I envision, and you know like or like Dean or like uh, um, you know like that sort of that sort of vibe. I, it's it's gonna be. I believe that's gonna become the mainstream when it comes to K-pop. Yeah. Well, I think uh, like if you look again, like ten years ago, K-pop was more uh, sort of influenced by Japanese music yeah. back then. Whereas as time has gone on, it's been more and more influenced by American music mm-hmm. and yep. American artists and whatnot. So I think it's gonna that's gonna continue to happen. And if not, uh, I guess it's going to like sort of make its own identity because mm-hmm. its music industry is becoming more and more developed as yeah. time goes on. Because I think technically, Japan's music in- industry is bigger just because it's been around longer. Yeah. But I think K-pop's is growing faster. But the thing, like, the, if there's one thing I have to say about the, the the J-pop music industry, it's sort of become stagnant. Um, in the yeah, last I, past I couple past couple of years, there hasn't been some that there hasn't been a level of exponential growth that K-pop has in the West, at least. So I th- I think it's diminishing because yeah, definitely it's, uh, it's losing great. It's losing um, territory definitely to K-pop. Because like yep. in the in Europe at least, like in the early two thousands, K-pop was popular. But then like from like I don't know like two thousand three, two thousand four to up to like twenty twelve, probably J-pop was the thing in Europe. Mm. Like as far as like Asian music goes, because they don't really care about music being in other languages because they all speak to yeah, yeah, yeah. Europe. Yeah, yeah. It's not so, like America. Yeah, so the like because they're not as homogenous uh, language lingually, I mm-hmm. guess the word would be for it. Did you have any other predictions, Nate? Um, not um, serious ones. Uh, okay. I'll save I'll save this for last. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, so, joke. uh, yeah, my uh other predictions 
are uh i guess i'll go into it because i still have more like conversation points i guess to make is like so i think if if not uh going back to my earlier point like if not bts i think it'd be twice but i think twice would sort of hit the uh sort of like gangnam style is a little ridiculous kind of thing mm-hmm, yeah because uh they're very like cartoony and like uh like their music videos i mean very like cartoony and fun and like yeah not a bad way either like it's uh like we love twice here yeah no twice, <laughs> twice boys, all the way like that is my only signed album is the one that's signed by Gio. so <laughs> i'm hoping to get i hope twice uh coaster lane 2 they do another signing because i'll buy that too yeah because i want to get sauna or not i'm really tempted for the pre-order because you get nine like uh sel- like selfie pictures if you oh, like pre-order cards you gotta yeah, pre-order like, it yeah, nine like times special ones though no if you pre-order you get nine pictures Okay. As a oh, bonus. I got that. I got that for. Uh, I got a boy, because I pre-ordered. I got okay, a boy. Okay, I, I should probably go out. pre-order that now. <laughs> yeah. Well, Monday. You can't pre-order it on Monday. Well. Okay. I'll yeah. pre-order it then. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, all it's gonna take is just another video to go viral, and I think uh, K-pop will be well on its way to become the mainstream, because you know, as K-pop receives more and more like positive reputation. Uh, you know, more and more collaborations are gonna happen. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Something like the something like the Galant tab- Tablo Eric Nam is just gonna be the norm after at, well, at some mean, point. Well, SM even Station Far East 2. movement. Oh yeah, yeah. SM Station. Yeah, but yeah, SM Station too. They announced that like a big part of this year's station will be collaborations with international artists. So. Yeah, because it's I'm, the, pr- it's I'm the hoping that means so Wiz Khalifa and Taeyeon will finally <laughs> happen. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure. hoping okay i am hoping that they uh mean like american artists by that not just artists from japan or china because yeah, yeah. Kind of, like I, no actually no i, I would said, no i would love well, to see i would love to well, see I, a collaboration I, do see that. I don't want that to only be the i would the love thing. to see a collaboration between yeah. j-pop and k-pop artists i've been dying for that ever since yeah. i got into both like in the ima- hype video oh god keep going like imagine right. imagine it's a song with like freaking like snsd and Perfume, perfume. perfume. <laughs> like yeah, the two big, amazing. the two biggest like I, like idol groups in Korea and Japan. Like, I think I'd die. Like, life would be disappointing from that point onward because it'll never get as good as that. <laughs> but in the hype well, so video, long as they, have a good they, named, song. they named like a billion countries. So I mean, they had like a bunch of European countries in the U.S. and stuff. See, I think, and I'm sure they had Japan. And see, stuff yeah, too. if if if, if so. SM's listening, you know, do something with perfume, and I would love you forever. Well, I think they also had their opening up. Uh, station to the public also yeah the, so like, there's a different like thing station. called open station oh so it's, it's separate i think it's different I hope yeah it's I, I don't think it's gonna take over like normal station releases Weeks. but yeah so p- kind of i just like indie artists can submit so and they were saying like from a platform anywhere. for them to uh, um, so kind of like how they did with that uh that prog metal band in um that's like in layer uh, yeah in layer um yes with, um and what was i gonna say oh yeah so i guess going off of like the international collabs like sm station is going to be big in 2017 at least like last year with uh the far east movement album like almost every track on there had a k-pop artist uh, yeah yep you know featuring like they they did that on purpose because they're uh you know asian americans and they want to sort of fuse that's oh, why just called far east movement i want to fuse the culture oh just but. quick shout out quick shout out to kev nish for randomly following me on instagram <laughs> did he follow Wait, you he followed you too i thought he just liked oh, no, the i don't video. know if he followed me actually no, i forget if he followed me but he, he liked a bunch of my he liked my uh post about um the he liked my ig post that i uh, i made about our last episode and he liked my ig post about my fire emblem heroes i don't know i don't know maybe he's playing fire emblem heroes too but yeah quick shout out to kev nish uh you know uh, if you're watching at all i love i love i've loved far east movement for years so yeah do more stuff their last album yeah Identity do more stuff fantastic. do more stuff with k-pop artists please i've been dying for something like this like forever so also release uh release the MVs for Sex with Me and Umbrella because I've been waiting for that. Yeah, no, I've been waiting for that Sex with Me uh MV. <laughs> J Park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh yeah like uh for real love the one with uh that was featuring Tanache yeah, and Chanyol which is such a weird like but uh collaboration but it works. Yeah. Like really well that was that had uh, airplay and it charted really well on like the dance um or electronic. It's either dance or electronic uh, right. charts that it was uh, charting really well on. And the music video has like 16 million views. So, like, I mean, it's not huge, but it, that, yeah. like that's even decent even for like a, you know, 
like pretty Middle decent age. size yeah k-pop group k-pop you know group, yeah. so i uh i hope i think we're gonna start to receive these more and more like even 2017 2018 2019 etc i think we're gonna start to see a lot more of that and yeah. i think sort of you know the globalism part of music at mm-hmm. least i think is gonna start to show over the next few years because of you know internet uh culture spreading mm-hmm. the love Oh, so another thing I'd want to um, I'd want to mention. Uh, I don't know when exactly it happened, but I'm a hundred percent sure that we're gonna get a we're gonna get a K-pop group that's gonna sell out a football stadium here in America or here in the West. Oh my God! If they if they played it, <laughs> that'd be like Tokyo Dome. Yeah, no, that's 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 pretty much the that, that's the Tokyo Dome of like playing at either like a I don't know. Uh, I don't know, maybe MetLife Stadium here in the here in Jersey or just something that on that level yeah. of of a. Uh, uh, like an entire stadium, <laughs> that would be so crazy. No, I, I get, I get. You know, anyway, I'm gonna put money on, or I'm gonna put like my word on the line. BTS, hundred percent. I'm predicting BTS. Oh I'm predicting BTS <laughs> will sell out a football stadium because they're that popular. I don't think they're will do it <laughs> in the U.S. Card will definitely do. I mean, Card is gonna sell out the they country. They got, they got BM stabbing. So yeah, no, he's gonna stop dabbing though. So that Cooper oh, like him. All right. Never you know stop what? dabbing. Gonna, Please don't I'm stop gonna dabbing. DM him. I'm going to DM him on Instagram. I was gonna say, never well, stop dabbing in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what that's what someone commented on the V Live. Uh, like, that's literally, literally that just, what they never stop dabbing. They, they commented never stop dabbing and he said or they said I think they said you can't stop the dabbing or something like that. <laughs> And then yes. he was like, actually, uh, everyone says I should stop, so I'm trying to stop. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't stop dabbing, please. But yeah, I can see... I, I, I think it's really funny. <laughs> no, I can see I can see a really big, that level of a, of a concert happening with a K-pop artist. It's, it's inevitable, because you can only fit so many people inside of, like, Madison Square Garden or, you know, like, a, a arena like that, so... I wonder how big the venues are for Shiny. <sighs> oh, for Shiny? Yeah, I'm um, not the sure because I, I it, bet they're decently big because they're real concerts. I think. But the thing yeah, is, though, I like, it, 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 um, yeah, I believe it's, a it's World Tour Five. I believe it's under Subculture Entertainment. That's the the company that's running it. I, if I'm mistaken, maybe. But it, it might just be like a smaller concert venue, um, like a mm-hmm. maybe just like a like a concert hall. Not really. Those are better, in my opinion. Anyways, yeah, because you get you get you get much artist. closer. So it's nothing like maybe something like the Best Buy or the the PlayStation Theater here in New York, something that level. Like yeah. uh, Epic Highs. Uh, North American tour, like they did these like cool, like classical sort of looking theaters. Yeah, uh, I never had again. I never had a chance to go to that, unfortunately. Well, I, I, I obviously didn't either. I got to see fan cams online, but I, <laughs> I think it was really cool, especially for the vibe of Shoebox, which is like the songs they're performing there. Yeah, it was really cool. But yeah, I think actually I'd go off of what you said earlier about there being way more tours. I, uh, I think they're gonna start to have a lot more locations, like yep. just like we're seeing last year. Yep. And this year. And I think also, um, I could see there being like a KCON like Midwest or something like yeah, that. Yeah, KCON Chicago. It's probably yeah, KCON Chicago. I could definitely see that. Or KCON Houston or something. Yeah. Or Austin or whatever. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of Koreans I, in Texas for some reason. I feel like Texas and, and Chicago are the next like for American ones at least. I mean, CJ is the one that owns KCON, right? No, uh, they the ones that put it on. I'm not done. No, I, CJ, yeah, but CJ I'm sponsors just, it, I believe, but, which is why like okay. Mnet and all that sort of stuff. So, like, yeah, okay. It's, wait, is Mnet under CJ? Or they're 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 some, they ha- Everything's under CJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think, like, all I know, all I know is CJ and uh, CJ which sponsors it. Is and, like, one of Andrew's future topics. <laughs> yeah, like how? Yeah, I have to, I have to like make a topic about how CJ runs the world or CJ runs Korea. Disney runs the United States. Yeah, essentially, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, definitely more KCON locations. I'm, I'm just calling that out now. I think they're going to have huge tours. I think they're all going to s- start to sell out more. And I think, um, cause every, every year there's always like a ton of news reports like, Hey, there's this new thing, K-pop that we covered like five times. <laughs> yeah. It's like, thing. It's, it's yeah, yeah. thing that's been around for 20 yeah, years. It, it seems to yeah. pop in and out of like the, the public consciousness. So I believe it, it'll, it'll keep happening. And, yeah. and and they always do it in like the most unhip way because it's the news. Well, uh, I read, uh, I I can't remember who it was, but uh, oh, it was Eli from UKIS is going to be doing uh, snippets for on NBC for the Olympics, like talking about oh, Korea. Oh, is he going to be culture. like? It's like him and like... like an NBC reporter. Oh, that's cool. Oh, the, are they going to be talking to Olympians? 
No, they're going to be like talking uh, about like the area and like different Korean culture. Yeah, because usually, because usually what the they do in the Olympics, Olympics is like, oh, let's oh. see, let's see the food, let's see the culture, let's see, yeah. like they, they try to introduce like the so country the way they're like, hosting the Olympics. Like, I hope they air minute. that like over here too. They're, no, they are. That's the thing. It's, yeah, like, it's okay. like five minute clips that they're going to be airing on like NBC mornings. Like in between like ad breaks and stuff. Yeah. Oh, and NBC. NBC, NBC yeah. not NBC. NBC. Yeah, that's that's what yeah. I was the like. The national why broadcasting channel. Yeah. NBC. <laughs> not NBC, N. So yeah, yeah it's okay. gonna be okay. like a, a American reporter and and Eli from UCAS doing these like snippets. So that'll promote it. That's another thing. The Olympics will promote it. Yeah, oh no, I believe, I believe. I believe. I didn't even think about that. Actually, I am hundred percent sure think that. About that. K-pop ex- K-pop's exposure is only going to go up once the Olympics come around because yep. the, it, that might be one of, another one of the catalysts I was talking about. Yeah, like, definitely. It's come, speed up the come, reaction. come this time because come February 2018, we'll 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 end up seeing. Yeah, dude, I they better have like an epic like opening ceremony with like an epic like, high twice or something <laughs> like. Oh, like, twice is show... part of it. And they definitely have to start. put. Cause. Like, cause like China and Beijing, they had a really cool one, but it was very formal. And but like, no, yeah. like you know, if you if you if you look at their closing ceremony, they had freaking Jackie Chan singing a song. Oh yeah, that was, that was amazing. <laughs> so like they, uh, K-pop, like or Korea, if they're smart, they're gonna incorporate K-pop as much as possible. Yeah, no, that's the because that. K. K-pop is or well, Korean music is their number one export, or that's the that's what's that's what I believe what besides kimchi. Well, other other than <laughs> I think probably a consumer electronics probably. Well, yeah, but yeah, like no, like in K-pop, terms of in terms but, of culture, but, like K- Korean music is what yeah, like, they're yeah. most identified for at this point. Well, so. it's probably one of the biggest culture exports in Asia, yeah. Despite China growing so big, but yeah. um, like uh the opening ceremony they'd be stupid not to like center it around k-pop because the more the exposure they get for it the more uh Money. revenue and tourism and stuff they bring to korea you know yep. yeah yeah well, like well, they gotta well, bring that stuff front and center we'll have a, we'll have a full topic I will, uh, we'll have a full topic on its own about like the olympics because we've, we've touched on it again with like the unikim thing and like this now but, yeah yeah, yeah. Well, uh i just want to speak about it a little more just for a second like Japan is doing the same thing right now with uh, their mascots. Like they got uh, Hello Kitty, they got Mario, they got like all these sort of like culture symbols of Japan. Doraemon. Uh, yeah, Doraemon, which is huge in Korea for some reason. Yeah, Doraemon's like, they, huge. Like there's some actor I don't remember who he is, but he's literally got like everything he owns is like Doraemon. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, he's like a good looking guy, and he's like fit and stuff. Like he's a big like muscular dude. And he has really, a ton really, of Doraemon really, stuff. Yeah, like he's got like Dory Mon underwear. That, he's that, got, like, that, that actually be a good topic, or, <laughs> or like um, everything. I saw I saw a Tumblr post of um just like idols, uh, K-pop idols, and they're like their their number one favorite sort of thing, or like how like I think I forget one member of Big Bang is in love with like Hello Kitty, or like Kwasa loves like from Mamamoo loves another thing, like or like they they collect like all of like yeah, one, yeah like, sort of like things. thing, so yep. like Sohei and penguins. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or card and chickens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> chickens. Oh, yeah. Jiwoo loves her chicken. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I guess that pretty much covers every oh. stone. Yep, I got I got one. So, oh yeah, you got your. You so got your, uh, my tag. my final yeah, my final prediction is uh, to counteract all this optimism, uh, Red Velvet announces a world tour and through the curse ruins oh, the entire no. industry. They destroy the K-pop industry by announcing a world tour. They announced a world tour and Korea goes bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. The whole country? Yeah, yeah they have, Velvet, like, Velvet like a stock, ruin stock market everything crash. everything with a world tour. That is my prediction. Sometime oh, in the next no. Five years. It won't happen. The curse. Please, please, please. Please, Velvet, no. please have a world tour, but don't wreak havoc. Like, get, get that, work on that curse. Get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> call, call some shamans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, our, uh, links everything is down in the description you want to know where to follow us on twitter look in the description or on the screen or wherever yeah like, and like right uh, follow us yeah follow you know debutcast on twitter follow andrew on twitter follow me on twitter follow me on twitter uh we're, uh, we're all yeah itunes stitcher uh yeah, soundcloud rate if us you want to listen to it rate us on yeah. itunes so we don't have any of those yet you don't have um, any rates no we don't have, we don't have any reviews yet Rate us five stars, because you know we're perfection. Just um, kidding, we're not, but we'd like to, so just rate us five stars anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and one last thing, I want to give a shout-out to Unpretty K-Pop Podcast, because they gave us a shout-out. 
So Jakari and Ty, they're from Houston. They're hilarious. Yeah, Check shout outs up. to them. Um, wait, were they pretty were, good? Wait, did they hey, were they K-pop the one? Pot, pot. Were, oh wait, no, uh, K-pop Hot Pot was the one that thought that Jacob was drinking. Jacob some... was drinking alcohol. <laughs> All right, last <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> last week I was drinking Sierra Mist. This is coffee. <laughs> he's, okay. he's underage. He can't drink booze. And I'm drinking Dasani sparkling water uh, in a can. <laughs> water in a can. That's heinous. But yeah, so K-pop Hot Pot and a pretty K-pop podcast. Go check you know, we out. we have to do we have to do a joint awesome. K-pop. Uh, oh, I'm uh, already K-pop doing podcast. Podcast. I tweeted I on Pretty K-pop podcast that so we're gonna do an hour card special at some point. Yeah, they love card too. Yes, um, so that's that's all that, I want. That'll that's... be a thing that happens eventually. I know. Right, again, we're episode. we're just gonna we're just gonna make the the, the PS I love you of card. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll just make a podcast. Yeah, exactly. Watch the yeah, no, what's the, like what's the card podcast gets more so popular we, than this? Yeah, <laughs> the weekly card podcast. All right. So uh, I guess <laughs> with that uh, we can uh, end the podcast. I think I mentioned everything I wanted to. Yeah, so. no, we're, we're all set. We're all set. <laughs> so yeah. All right, good. Subscribe, comment, like. You know all that jazz. Everybody always tells you to smash it. You can just hit it. It's all right. We're good. Yeah, click just, it. just click it. Okay. Just and uh, select it. And uh, yeah, gently select the slight the like button, <laughs> and uh, and don't touch the dislike button. We're getting uh, we're getting some trolls. Yeah, you take care of. Them. Yeah, I might I might start a, a hate hate comment theater at some point where I read our hate comments. <laughs> you know, like Dude, I so we can make that. fun of them. Yeah, no, one day, but one day. That's that's definitely something I was thinking about too. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, so uh, yeah, see you later, and Anyo. thanks for uh, listening or watching or whatever you're doing. Stay creamy. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> I'm still keeping Card it. Card will take over the world. I'm still keeping it. Bye, guys.